I wanted people to look in their own yard to find their usher. You have to look in America. Oh, yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm good enough. I can stay in, I can be in the same room with Usher. You know the little music breaks where the band is just breaking it down and then I'm speaking to the crowd yeah, 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 and I'm like, you yeah. ladies make some noise. Yeah. <laughs> Come on! <laughs> Dog. On Couch. Lego and culture hello and welcome to yet another episode thank you very much for watching commenting and of course subscribing to the content thank you very much for joining us donald is in the house uh, you up, always bro? take care of yourself like you're always looking good thank you man thank yeah. you yeah I'm, uh, I'm doing my best yeah I do you think about it like do you, is it something that's always in your head how do i look how do i present yourself present myself well i think my appearance has have, has always been something that is important to me uh it's a it's a long-term habit. So I started it, you know, back in high school. Yeah. I've always really cared about my appearance. And and I think going into the, the, the career that I went into, it then became something that I really have to focus on and do intentionally. Because I, be, you know, I became an R&B crooner, an R&B star, and... If you if you understand R and B and the history, yeah. you can't be an R and B crew now without looking good one way or another. Yeah, that's it why you sometimes you sing in the rain in your music videos. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, I mean, those are some of, those are some of the I would say those are some of the encouraging. Uh, like, if, at some point, it's part and parcel yeah, of the R and B yeah, journey. At some point, if you, if you're gonna be an R and B artist, you needed to have a music video or a scene. Where you are in the rain and you're pouring your heart out. That's cheesy. Remember, That's cheesy though. Yeah, but you see, the, the the cheese for the for the R&B world has always worked. The more cheesier, the better, actually, because <laughs> That's interesting. Yeah, because it's like the thing about the the message. First of all, you gotta think about who you're singing to, right? So you're singing to women. Women women love to hear certain things. You know what I mean. Sometimes, and I'm, I know this might come across a bit uh, controversial, sometimes, even if it's not true, as long as it comes out a certain way, yeah. um, you know, you, you, can, you can get away with it, basically. Um, saying, I love you, I miss you, you are my world, the yeah. earth, the moon, the water. Yeah. You understand <laughs> what I mean? Like, it's, it's always been, it's, it, 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 from history, it's like, oh my gosh, she's so sweet. Yeah. You know what I mean? She must add surprise on Valentine's Day when you give her something. When you give her something. Even though she even knows though, it's the 14th of February. Do you understand? Like, and it, it's worse now with social media. <laughs> because it's like now for the clicks and the views, she really needs to act surprise. Like, yo, I mean, she needs to show everybody that, yo, yeah. my, my man is just so sweet and, 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 and. So, um, I think I'm in the business of, uh, one, entertaining, two, uh, inspiring love. So when you when you when you're in the business of that, you also have to understand that some people are gonna are not gonna take that well. They're gonna think that you are cheesy, number one. They're gonna think that you are soft. They're gonna think all sorts of things. Mm. But that is that's the business that I decided to get into. And I've always been ready for it. Like I've yeah. always known that I'm that guy when I walk into the room, I'm sure my cheat on the side are having a little laugh, nya or whatever, yeah. whatever. Yeah. But that laugh is not to say they hate me. It's just their own insecurities. Because they know that when I show my love very freely, you know what I mean? I show it very freely. Like I'm, I'm more closer to being secure in my own skin than most guys are. Because I'm not scared to say how I really feel about something or someone. And if I feel emotional, I will cry. Because I'm a human being. You know? Not because you're gay. Not, not because? Not because you're gay. <laughs> Imagine, bro. So, so, so the one thing about that yeah. is that it's a trend. It's always been a trend. If you're an R and B artist, and you are a clean guy, you're light in complexion, all that. You're not supposed that. to be clean, clean though. Yeah, but why Maybe the we hell can, not? We can debate. We can. Yeah, debate. no, no, no. That one we can definitely be, debate. Um, why, is, but, why, why must you always be clean? Like I, I'm due a haircut. It feels great. If you can look at me, I'm yeah. due a haircut. Yeah, but I'm, I'm like, no, nah, kid, I don't want to. Yeah, but that's on you. You know, so, every so man you know, for the, you every man always have to be clean, clean. For me, I have to always be clean. I'm clean. Like I took a shower, run so, on, I'm clean. So my thing is like this, right? If I'm stepping out of the house, I definitely have to be clean. Those are my rules. That's for me because um, you know, I just feel like if you when you're clean, you feel good. 
You know what I mean? When you look good, you feel good. So when you technically clean, is yeah. because you took a shower. You used bar soap and what I mean, not, not, I mean that's that's fundamentally that's the first thing that's important. Technically, you yeah. clean. So after. it's not about anything. It's not about the very um, fancy hairstyles yeah. or whatever. It's about first of all clapper. Mm-hmm. Yes, like as often as possible, because <laughs> ultimately not, also not every day. No, every day, dog. <laughs> hey, Unguleko, what are you saying, bro? Not every day. So are you? Bro. So are you? Are you telling? Are you trying to tell people that you don't bath every and, day? No, you don't shower. If, if I'm not going anywhere, I'm not. Sh- <laughs> <laughs> hey, this guy. Not <laughs> every day. Wow. Well, people who come from where I come from, yeah. they will attest to the fact that I'm a daughter of Lambi every day. Yeah, you know? well, I will go out of my way to Nklambi every day. <laughs> I have to try. <laughs> if if I'm Nklambi, maybe that's because I've been in bed all day. Like, yeah. I literally, because I've got those days yeah. when I actually don't get out of bed. I, I'm maybe just really tired and, you know, I just eat. I just wake up, eat, drink water and sleep. You yeah. Know? Something uh, phenomenal happened 10 years ago. You yeah. released Train of Love. I was 11 years ago, technically speaking, mm-hmm. 2012. Yeah. Congratulations on that. Thank you. I Thank spoke you. to Ubonga Zubema and in 2012, um, he released the Umlilo album, which mm-hmm. I have. I still have a copy bongi, of bongi? it. Bonga Oh, yeah, yeah, um, yeah. He's a folk singer. He sings yeah, yeah. Kosa. He plays guitar. Yeah, he plays yeah, guitar. Well. Yeah. yeah we, and we've met at some point. He was here and I was so excited because... Um, 10 years ago, I was 22. Yeah. Um, I was 22. Yeah. Yeah. 22, 22 yeah. in 2012. And I, I fell in love with the music that was released at the time, particularly his music. Yeah. Your songs were so ubiquitous that I could hear them on radio. I was still listening yeah. to radio yeah. at the time. Metro FM, because I'm from Cape Town. I'm sure Ukozi, it was on, on, on rotation all the as well. No, all the um, best stations. You know, that, actually, actually to yeah. help you with that, in 2012, I was the most played artist in South Africa. Oh, nice one! Yes, as a like collectively, yeah, 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 yeah. that year because yeah. I had I deserve I had denial and over the moon. All yes, in one year. yes, yes, yes. Yeah. And they would have felt like they come from different albums. That's how much of bangers they were. Hundred percent. That if you were releasing them maybe three months apart, yeah, it's like a new album. Yeah, and I I was playing them on Spotify, mm. and all of them like. This is oh, all album. coming from. Yeah. from There's also album. your joy. Your yeah, joy. joy. Yes, mm-hmm. yes, it's there. Yeah, and you did a, a video with Pam Andrews in it. No, right? not your joy. Mm-hmm. So, your joy. I had Nomza Mombata. Sure. With Clint Brink. <laughs> on it. So, so where do you get the money to be on yeah. radio and get all the stars? Yeah. Though, how how, so, how was the journey of that album? So, first of all, um, thank you so much for that question because I think you know you're probably one of the very few people that have kind of noticed the i would say the, the, the just just how can i how can i how can i say this it seems a little bit bizarre right how the the blow up happened yeah because i wasn't necessarily connected to anyone specific like you want to sign to a major oh, label no 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 so so i'll i'll fix that so i was associated with a, a major label yeah. but that only came after the blow up so I was already big. I already had I deserve on the streets, yeah. charting already. Then Universal Music called me, yeah, um, and and they wanted to offer me a deal. And by that time, you know, my my business mind was already thing thing. I was already there. I already knew a lot of things, you know. And one of the things that I did when I left We Love Steel Productions, DJ Cleo's label, was that I wanted to be an independent artist. I think by then I had already decided. You know what I think. If I'm going to have it easier in this very difficult industry, I need to be in control of my business. So I started my own label called The Exclusive Sounds yeah. immediately when I left. And um, then I released uh, I Deserve. By the way, the album wasn't out. I Deserve was out. As a single? As a single, yes. But it was just on radio. Because at the time, we didn't have uh, no stream, streaming, streaming, no streaming whatever. Yeah, so it was just on radio. There was no CD. So I used to actually cut my own CDs. And I would give them away to people on the streets. I would give them away to guys that had like nice sound in the car. Sure. I would stop them. Like literally, I used to stop guys at the robots and say, yeah, please, please take the song. And then they would obviously take it because it was for free. Right? Yeah, yeah. And the song blew up on its own, bro. I didn't have to I lift a finger. I don't understand that though. I didn't have to lift a finger. So I Deserve came out. Um, there's a guy called Simpiwa Majola. Mm-hmm. Are, you, are you familiar I'm with him? I'm familiar with him. Um, he's in the PR world. In the sure. In the... Uh, the marketing and PR world. Um, he's one of the, the most, you know, known people in that in that world. Um, and he was one of the people that first believed in me. 
and I I met him through Cleo. Actually, I met a lot of people through through Cleo because Cleo used to take me everywhere when I was signed to him. Literally everywhere, even to his own gigs, to events. I was always there as just the guy that's there with Cleo. Sure. Most people didn't know who I was, but. I think I was smart enough to understand that in this industry, you are more powerful with the people you know. The more people you know, the better. And what you need to do is try and make as many relationships as possible. Mm -hmm. And I took a lot of numbers during my time with Cleo. Um, I knew who was who, who did what. Sure. You know, I knew Tihunabo Nati, who are uh, um, compilers at Metro FM, yeah, yeah, yeah. who was at that time, at the time it was a probably the most important person because yeah. Metro FM was was breaking artist. Yeah, I yeah. remember when Kwaito musicians and com musicians were complaining about him at some point. Yeah, 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 yeah him, him, that guy. So I met him at some point through Cleo, and I, 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 I found found a way to make sure that he gets the song. Mm -hmm. And actually, Simpua Majola is the one that took that song to Metro FM because mm -hmm. that is. I mean the station. That's that, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah that's, that's it's a perfect place because they play R and B throughout Sunday. Yes, you know, and late nights as well. They play R and B, mm -hmm. and there's a there was a clear. There's always been a clear lack of Af Af South African musicians. Got you. They always play American music, mm -hmm. and they need South African music to do R and B. So that was a perfect marketplace for you. Exactly. So Simpua Majala took. Actually, I'll tell you the story. I gave Simpua Majala the song today. The following day, he went to Metro FM. He got into the office, and then he met with Nati. Gave Nati the CD. Said. I know this is Donald. I'm sure you know him. He's the one that's always with Cleo. Please listen to it. Give it an opportunity. Give it a chance, right? I, I, I should you not. He gave the, he gave him that song in the morning of that day. In the afternoon, in the afternoon drive, that song was playing on the mm. radio for the first time. Yeah, ever. Do you remember if that was Cleo's afternoon? Uh, sorry, um, Tibo Touch's afternoon drive at the time. No, it wasn't. No, in 2012, it was somebody else. It must have been Glenn Lewis then. Possibly just before before Touch started, yeah. actually, yeah. Um, they played the song. <clears throat> Someone told me, yo, you need to listen to the radio right now. Your new song is playing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I listen and I'm like, okay, Shab, this is a good sign. I, I didn't want to get too excited because I also realized how this thing, like for you to blow up, it takes so much. Like it takes so much. It can take so long also. You could like have a... Do something nice, Nyana, here. Maybe just be on TV. Just do one interview on TV and then and think you've made the it. end of that. Yes, that could literally be the end of that, you know? So it's a, it's, a, it's a combination of things that you do. You showing up for certain opportunities. Mm -hmm. So for me, the song playing on the radio was really exciting, but it, it didn't mean that I've made it. So I was like, okay, cool. That's a good sign. Tomorrow, I heard the song again. For the, so now I listen to Metro FM 24-7 now. Because now I know they've just got the song. How many times just to see it. if they will play it. Yeah. Literally the following day they played it again. And they were playing it during the day on the most the biggest shows. Like either um, the breakfast, breakfast show, show or afternoon drive. the afternoon drive. Okay. It played for two weeks straight on Metro FM. Mm. I mean, obviously That's ridiculous. That's going to definitely spark something. Yeah. Yeah. So I remember I was I was living in Melbourne at the time. Uh, in a in a in a in a in a in a is it a, no no it wasn't a commune it was one of those flat flat uh, block block of flats in, in in no it wasn't Melville it was Auckland Park it's literally a walk away from, from SABC no, no no a walk away from the from the from the campus oh yeah from yeah, Bunting yeah. Road yeah yeah so one of the block of flats there I was staying there I remember sleeping you know I used to sleep very until very very late and I'm depressed and I'm when I feel like my life is not going well I'll sleep until twelve. Whatever I, I remember very well, it was around eleven, and I got woken up by the the song was playing. Yeah. Like literally, a car was passing because I because my flat was very much close to the road, so I could hear whatever. If the car is, is bumping a song, I could actually hear it. So I'm sleeping and I'm I'm waking up. I'm like, no, 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 man. I just I'm hearing my song and it's not playing in my in my flat. Where's the song playing yeah. from? And then. I go on my phone, I realize I got a missed call. I call the person back and the person says, yo, yo, your song just playing on Metro FM right now. And then it clicked off. So the person who was driving past uh -huh. was actually listening to Metro FM uh -huh. and they were bumping it, like big sound. And I was like, damn, okay, something's really happening here. I literally so saw... This is a, sorry to cut you. So this is like a two, three week period yes. where the song is gaining buzz. Yes, it's gaining and at buzz this on course, the radio. At, uh, yes, on, yeah. on radio. Yeah. At this point, they're not trying to call you for interviews. No, and like, no. Trying to understand... No one is calling me yet. Okay, that's actually, weird. At the time. Yeah, no, very weird. That's but, weird. But the song went straight into into uh, high rotation. Yeah. I think there was also 
a certain mystique about that song. Like most people thought it was a lady singing that song. Oh for yeah, the longest time. You have a dope full set actually. Yeah, we'll so, talk, we'll so talk about initially it. before people got used to my voice, they thought I was a woman. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So what happened was, um, if I remember well, I sent so DJ Kent. Remember DJ Kent? Oh yeah, DJ Kent. DJ yes. Kent, yeah, yeah. The, 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 the house. It was DJ. yeah, it was with Euphonic and they were Kent Phonic at some point. Yes, yes. Um, I I knew his manager just through obviously the the the, the Clio maneuvering of the in, sure. in the industry. Um, and I remember sending him the song, and I said to him, "Yo, dog, please tell me what you think of the song, right? Like, do you think I'm, I'm on the right track, was it?" And then he came back to me and said, "Yeah, dog, it's a it's a nice song. Yeah, yeah, but mm, I don't know if it will like." break you like if it can really make your career and i was like okay i mean i took that it was feedback you know yeah. all i wanted was just feedback and then i think a week after that i get a call from someone from what was that what was that 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 company that used to release uh house um soul candy soul candy yeah, remember yeah, soul candy? yeah, yeah i remember soul candy yeah. i get a call from someone from soul candy um i don't remember who it was but basically the 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 the, the, the call was we heard your song, I Deserve, and would like to offer you, we she'd like to take the song and put it on a compilation. Yeah. Something in me said, nah. I've, I've watched so many vocalists make such amazing music in mm. the past. Yeah. And the shine is always yeah. taken by the DJs. They, they, they get it swallowed by house by music. By the DJ. By dance music. Yes, by dance music, the culture. Yeah. And by the DJ who gets to release the song. Yes. So they yes. they so the vocalists just become the vocalists yeah. and they never really make a, a, a career out of that. That was clever on your part because that so happens. Vocalists get swallowed. For so long. It was happening in the nineties with hip hop. Yeah, that there would be vocalists who are helping out Wu Tang Clan, but mm -hmm. you don't know who they are. Mm -hmm. You don't care to know who they are. You just love the song. But just never Wu cared at all. You know. Yeah. And then it it transitioned at some point. This is also happening with Ama Piano as 100%. well. Hundred percent. There's some dope vocalists that you don't know. You just know, oh, oh that one is Maporisa, that one is Caps are Small, and that one is this and that's a trillion or whatever. But hundreds of them, hundreds of dope vocalists, yeah. you won't, you you will never know who they are. So I was that guy thinking, I don't want to fall into that trap. Yeah. I believe, I really do believe that I've got something. So special. on this call, you are conscious of that. Yes. That's yeah. dope. Actually. Yeah. I'm hearing this. And I mean, it, that's, that could sound like a, an amazing opportunity, right? Yeah. For an yeah, that's what I'm saying. It's dope because it's, it's an opportunity. Yeah. Because they wanted to pay me. Yeah. I don't remember how much it was. Probably yeah. 5K or 10K. Yeah. Like that thing <laughs> really to write home about. Yeah. Um, and I said, um, let me think about it. But I already knew in my head, nah, I'm not going to take this deal. Because what if the song becomes the biggest song in the country? At that time, I'm just saying that to myself. I really don't know that this song is going to be the biggest song. Yeah. Um, after that call, um, there's a guy called uh, DJ Monotone. Mon I, I may have known DJ Monotone. Monotone. Yeah. He actually had a song at some point that was big in South Africa. Um, I think... He... Remember that song? Yeah. Something like that. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So he was one of the guys also. But we don't know the vocalist from the song. Yeah. Concha, what was the name? Yeah, well, but we know the DJ. The, po yeah. the point again. Yeah. We know the again. DJ top of mind. Again. But you don't know the vocalist. 100%. So Monotone was one of the people that I knew in Auckland Park and in, 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 in Melville. I would go to his studio. He had a studio in, in, in his flat. And he was just one of those guys that we were all just hustling together um then his song was blowing up around the same time yeah and now he was going on tour doing shows as a dj and something in me said no but ask him if there's a possibility for you to join him when he when he when he at, all i ever wanted to do bro was to hustle for my career and do anything humanly possible to make sure that i make it yeah and he said oh, i'm fine no of course i'll play your song in my set you'll take a mic and you'll sing the songs you introduce yourself to the people that's exactly what i did I'll, and this is now at the time when I deserve is slowly now starting to make a buzz. I'm sure people are busy They're sending it to each other. No, people are saying, remember house, how, what house music used to do? Like if you had a new song yeah. and it was really hot, you wanted your friend to hear it. Yeah, well, Bluetooth it to yeah, each other. exactly. So that's actually what happened with I deserve. They would share the song with each other and then I would then start showing up in these shows with monotone. Mm -hmm. um, and people didn't know who I was. They just saw this skinny, lighting complexion boy with a, a voice that sounds like a woman. And yeah. just, what the hell is going on? But it's those shows that also, I would say, I would say, build my confidence. 
because I would enter the stage and there was there would there would always be a group of girls somewhere in the crowd yeah. who are going crazy. And I was just like, yo, is this really happening? Yeah, like, yeah, yeah, so that yeah. means yeah. there's something here. That you gives know? you confidence. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Because yeah. the worst thing that can happen is for you to perform to a crowd of like a thousand people. Yeah. They don't give a and nobody are. cares. No one is reacting. No, at just least not a favorite, small so. crowd in the front. Yeah, yeah, Someone yeah, yeah. should be. But I think also what helped was just how catchy that song was. So there's the love I know I deserve. That yeah. with the guitar yeah. that went with it. The, do, do, do. The, that melody was just so infectious. Can I tell you something? Yeah. My daughter was born in 2012. Okay. By the time she was two years old, she was singing that song. 2014. No bull- that is so crazy. No bull- she was singing, as you were saying it, the melody, yeah. the high pitch. Yeah, no, it it's, was it's catchy enough. Way too catchy. Yeah. To, it was so catchy to a point where at some point, pe- people were, were, were over it. Yeah. Like it was annoying. Yeah. Because it was so much. <laughs> Even me, I was annoyed of them. So I heard it way too many times. Yeah. But going back to the story, um, I start doing these shows with Monotone. And then obviously not much is still happening. I'm not getting any calls for gigs. No one is really, really wanting to find out who the person behind the song is. Because for some reason, a lot of people have con- convinced themselves that this is an international vocalist, an international song released by an international DJ. Mm. Nobody really thought that this could be a Donald who's a South African uh, young man from Rastenbeck. Yeah. No one could even fathom that, right? Yeah. So December came of that year. Because I released, actually, I put the song out in 2011. Not even 2012. <laughs> I put the song out in the streets in 2011 in October. Yeah. Um, then it's playing on Metro FM between October and November. December, I go to a party and I meet Strula. You know Strula? Is he not doing the voiceovers on Friends Like This? Yeah, him. Okay. Nice so one. he used to be the producer for Live Amp. Oh, damn. Yeah. For the longest time. I didn't know. That. During the Bonang era. Yeah. Going straight Andy into Le's the era. Andy Le, I don't think it was part of the Andile era, but the Bonang era. Yeah. Full, the full, fully part of the Bonang era. Mini and Mini. the mini uh, era, the Paul Tusi and Lude Love era. Okay. That yeah. was a long time. So a long for time. a very long time, he was a producer. Um, I had met him also through Cleo. You see. Uh, it, Cleo is literally the common denominator in my career. But we, we'll understand that as, as I keep going. So we... I meet him at a, at a party in December somewhere. Remember that party where where Ganagaman and Kenny Kunene used to do his, his sushi party? Oh, yeah, Zapa or something. Zapa, yeah. <laughs> For some reason. I don't know who I knew. You ate sushi there? No, no, I didn't. On top of black <laughs> woman. I, I've, I've seen him do it, like live. Yeah. Not, not, not in videos like other people used to, to see the videos <laughs> that trended, but I actually have seen it live. Yeah. I went to that party. Nobody knew who I was, but I knew someone that got me into the party. It was an industry party. So most of most industry people were there, behind the scenes people, some famous people. And then I met Chula there. He remembered me from 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 being around, uh, being with Cleo. And then he was like, Yo, Mvana, so what are you doing now? You know? I'm like, ah, Manish, I'm still pushing, you know, I'm still trying to break into the game. Um, I actually have a song, you know, that's that's been out, I think, because I'm not, I wasn't sure. I wasn't really fully sure. I was like, Yo, I think the song is making some rounds in, in the streets, but maybe you might know the song. I don't know. And he said, really? Can you sing it for me? Or sing the chorus? Literally, in the club. There's music playing. In the yeah, yeah. So I had to go to his ear. I'm imagining this yeah. whole thing. I had to go to his ear and say, the song goes, the love I know I just say. He went, what? I know that damn song. Are you kidding me? That's your song. I was like, yeah, yeah, dog, that's, that's my song. He's like, okay, sure. So here's what's going to happen. It's December now. Live Amp is closing. I think they were doing their last episode for the year, for that year of 2011. And then now he was planning for January when they come back on air. And he said, I'm giving you a date. The 29th. I still remember it like it was yesterday. I don't yeah. know if it was the 29th or the 28th, between the two. The 29th of January, you are on Live Amp singing that song. I was like, what? Are you serious? He's like, yes. Guleko, I kid you not, bro. Can you imagine what happened to me between that time when I met him? Yeah, yeah. And, like, can you imagine the the, the, the anxiety? Yeah. Because I was thinking, live amp. Yeah, and at the time, you don't have an, a particular I image. I have nobody, bro. You haven't have carved nothing. out an image for yourself. I don't have a man- manager. Yeah. I've got nothing. It's just me. Yeah. Huh. Right? Sharp. So, I wait for the time. I prepare myself. Nishama push up. 
You understand? I'm doing all the things, you know, all the R&B things. <laughs> I'm looking I'm looking for the outfit. I'm looking for the perfect outfit for me to launch myself cuz now this is probably probably my first solo TV interview cuz I had done interview views in the past in my group cuz I was part of a group that's actually where the career started. But that's a that's a, another part of my my life that a lot of people don't know. But I prepared myself for the performance and that performance came mm. on the 29th of January 2012 and I was still unsigned. Imagine, I'm still unsigned but I'm getting opportunity to perform on live amp and at that time when you perform on live amp you're gone. Yeah. Is what is it is it 8 or 9 p.m. South African time yeah. Friday night. Yeah. Yeah, that was important for us because we didn't have streaming platforms. Mm-hmm. Even the idea of watching music videos on YouTube yeah. wasn't there already, so we would see like I love music. So yeah. our favorite musicians we would see there. Yep. It's like if you're not listening to them on radio, um then you would see there or you have to stay up and watch SABC 1 from like if you don't have from, DSTV from like 12 1 from 12 until 5 a.m. Mm-hmm. That's where we would get musicians and yep. watch musicians. Yep. Um so for me like that was a game changer. I didn't I didn't know what was going to come on the other side of that yeah. interview but this was possibly for me the, the the light at the end of the tunnel oh my gosh I think something's about to happen yeah. that's what I, that's all I I kept thinking to myself January comes I do the interview with Bonang possibly one of her last interviews before Queen she leaves B. Queen B before she actually left the, mm. the 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 show um I remember very well man I did that interview and I performed the song and then i came out of the twitter was very new trending was a new thing yeah. so it was very exciting at the time i remember when i was done off a bonang saying to me listen to me you got something really special go on social media and retweet every single tweet about you and tonight's show and the song and everything retweet everything make sure that you are engaging with your fans sure. on social media that's, that's so advice that's what she said to me and when i got home that's exactly what i did and i found all sorts of tweets bro all sorts yeah. from famous people too yeah, yeah. who were watching so, so all the good with the bad yes so there was a realization and a discovery for the industry of someone who seems like they could go and become something i could that that for me is what i got out of the response that i got there were a lot of people saying ah oh, they was well no with was showing like because I, i used to wear like like I used to show my my arms yeah. actually I used to wear these cut up shirts or whatever so people would find a way to make fun of that you were cheesy though like yeah, I, I, I remember yeah. the first moments I, I saw you I you were cheesy I was. but now reflecting on it it's ridiculous how yeah. you got airplay i'm i'm happy to hear the story now yeah. first hand it just happened yeah yeah he, they just they just loved the song yeah and if metro fm was playing the song on high rotation everyone else is like yay who what song is that we yeah. don't have it We need it. Yeah. So they actually started either asking Metro for the song or asking whoever other DJs that have picked up the song for someone that has it to send it to them. Mm. So I deserve the version that used to play on the radio was actually the long version, the five minutes. Yeah. <laughs> because there was no cut up version sure. because I didn't have a label. It like, wasn't in, in an album. Yeah. That was the only thing available. People found it. Yeah. Like the radio stations found it themselves and put it on on high rotation. Yeah. So all of that just started kind of Um, um I would say building up right so that interview I mean I remember even after that interview I saw I saw um I saw um what's this actually no 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 after that interview the following week the the plan with Stula was that the following week we play your music video so what I did in Jan while I was preparing for the interview I had to find money yeah, <clears throat> resources for a music video to shoot a music video yeah and I didn't have money money damn I didn't have money I went to Pilot Films. Um someone connected me to Pilot Films at the time. They were the most popular production company at the time. They were shooting everyone's music videos. Um um, uh, Ju- um what's his name? Uh, uh, Bruce Bruce Patterson. Mm-hmm. Um I found him, had an in- a-, a meeting with him. This is all in Jan. And then I asked him to please allow me to shoot a music video. I will give him because he had asked for 25,000 for the music video. Mm-hmm. And I said to him, I don't have 25,000. But um, I have asked, I've kind of like asked friends to put money together for me to help me because this is this feels like a really big moment for me. So my friends are helping me out, but we've only been able to raise fifteen thousand. So can you help me shoot this music video, and then I will owe you the ten 
I'll pay you the 10 as soon as I've been able to raise it. So there wasn't even a set date mm. for me to pay back the 10. And for whatever reason... He took your word. No, he believed it. Damn. Yeah. And he was meeting me for the first time. But for whatever reason, he really thought, no, no, this guy, this guy is, is legit. So he did the music video for I Deserve For Me. I asked for, um, for, 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 for favors from people. Uh, you know, styling, Simpua Majola, that guy I was telling you about, the PR yeah. guy, hooked me up with Paledi, who's a designer, to come and dress me for the music video. He dressed me for the music video. And then um, I, I then asked uh, Tato Mulamu. At the time, he was on Generations. He was a big, big actor on Generations. At the, you know Tato Mulamu? Um, wasn't he in a love interest with Sharon? Sh uh, was he in love interest with Sharon? But he, he, he was bold. No, he was No, he was bold. You know Tatumale, the uh, Tona guy. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. He, he's not Kenneth Mashaba's child there. He's, he's dark skin. Yeah, he's dark skin. He's dark skin. He's, he's, skin, he's yeah. Kenneth Mashaba's child. So you definitely do the, know him, yeah. Yeah. Um, he was one of the guys that I had met just at Josie Village, just hustling the entertainment industry. Yeah. And because he's Tuana, he's from Mav Town. Sure. And I'm Tuana, Rastenberg. We, we, we kind of knew each other. Nice. We, yeah. So he, I called him, asked him to be in my music video, and he said yes, for free. So he came through. I did the music. Who was in the music video? The, who was the, the girl in the music video? Your video vixen. Oh, the, 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 the girl from Pretoria. It was the girl from Pretoria that was also in the denial video. Yeah. So, so Tato Mulamu came on board. We shot the music video. And I submitted the music video to Live Amp. Yeah. So after this performance this Friday, the following week, which is actually the week of my birthday. Yeah. Because my birthday is on the 7th of Feb. They played my music video for the first time on TV. Nice one. On live. So this is two weeks in succession on the biggest TV, I mean, music TV show in the country. And I remember seeing a, a tweet from uh, from Luis Obala. Yeah. He was just intrigued and like... <laughs> and he, you you are in his vicinity. Yeah, he was intrigued. But he made a joke, Nyana, you know, was yeah, well, there was this guy having a car accident on his music videos like, was like <laughs> you know what i mean <laughs> i actually i actually i think i've rem I've reminded him of that moment yeah. you know because i didn't I, I saw him last week somewhere he was performing somewhere. yeah i was like yo bro you know you're one of the guys that made fun of me when i first came out <laughs> 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 and we laughed about it but but i remember seeing that and i was like yo yo like even bully you saw tweeting about me. yeah something's definitely that's, happening that's validation yeah everyone is seeing you is looking yeah. at you so now think about this because I get it, this is to explain to you how this whole thing happened. First week, Stula decides, I'm going to give this boy his first TV break, right? And then the second week, they play my music video. And my friends are busy donating money for the music video. Then the week after, it's actually, immediately after that Friday, I get a call on Monday from the, the Nolin Maholana Sanu Sanu show. Uh, show. SABC3. Yes. That was a dope, big so, show. So they're saying, we saw you on Live Amp. And we really would like to have you. And it's February. And you just perfectly represent oh, the month this of month of love. Yeah. So week one is live amp. Week two is live amp. Week three, I was on, on No Lean. Yeah, that's one of the biggest live. biggest um, midday shows at the time. Yep. With a huge women audience. Yep. I was on TV three weeks in succession. Wow. On the biggest shows. Yeah. Biggest free numbers. Free to air. Those, yeah. those are, nothing beats free to air numbers. Absolutely. Nothing beats free to air numbers. Absolutely. I can tell you now, that moment, those three weeks, is when I really felt like my life has changed. Mm. I, I'm definitely inside now. I'm inside. Because now, anywhere I went, I would be recognized. Yeah. yeah like someone, well, not anywhere, but like there would be one person who's like, yeah, man, who's this I know guy? this guy. I know this guy. Yeah. Um, I started getting calls. Hey, yo, hey, Xen, uh, this is Sban Bani from, uh, from Rastenberg here. We've got a gig, man, at this place. Or, 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 you know, can we book you? Ah, no, no, it's cool. You can book me. What's the budget? Ah, we've got 6K for you. 6K? Ah, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> Bro, that's exactly how we started. That February, the gigs started coming in. Mm -hmm. And I was like, yo, now it's, it's getting a bit And too you're performing much. one song? Yes, I'm performing. Well, I'm performing three songs. But they, they don't know the other two. Sure. Because I also had Denial and I had Over the Moon. And oh, I had okay. Your, I had all those songs, okay. by the way. Before before all of this happened, that album was done. You already had those yes, songs. Yes, I had, I had all those songs. And they so, all became iconic in their yeah, own right. Yeah, but people didn't know them. So they didn't react to those songs. But when I Deserve came, there was a familiarity to them, yeah. to, to, to that melody. And I started getting a lot of attention with that. And, and guys would book me with those 6Ks. 
Um, but the workload was getting too much. And I met a friend of mine called Skin Deep. He's a DJ. Mm. I don't know if you know Skin Deep. Uh, T.D. Soliana. Um, and I just like was like, yo, actually, why don't I ask Skin Deep to manage me? Because maybe he's not busy with a lot of things. So I called him up and, yo, my G, ish, my life is starting to get a little bit hectic. You know, are you interested in being my manager? It was like, my boy, let's roll. And literally, that's where everything started. Me and T.D. So would be like this together. He was my DJ mm -hmm. and he was my manager and he was my road manager. Yeah. And that was that was the team. Yeah, just that's, that's fascinating, man. Yeah. Um, and everything's just started happening. Yeah. Like literally, we never got to do anything. We never even got to make, a, 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 to, to prepare a marketing plan. Yeah. Because everything came to yeah, us. Yeah, because we're going to go to SAPC. Yeah. We're going to go to community radio. We didn't do anything. We're going to perform coastal. Mm -hmm. We're going to perform inland cities. We didn't do any like of that. Yeah. Everyone called us. It was the moment mm -hmm. that no one could stop. Yeah. yeah. I, I think there's something... There's a there's a great lesson that you maybe want to impart here about that album because even when I spoke to you about it initially, mm -hmm. uh, I could see from your eyes that you 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 now realize a decade a decade later that something about that album, something about everything that happened there, mm -hmm. uh, taught you something about waiting, taught you something about being patient, uh, taught you something about just allowing the world to to direct you. To follow the world's direction. What did you learn about those moments? What do you what did you learn about the interpersonal relationships that you have with people and patience and hustling? Whilst you are being patient, you're not sitting down. You're preparing yourself. Mm -hmm. You had other songs prepared just in case you don't only just perform what I deserve. Mm -hmm. You perform the other songs mm -hmm. as well. What did you learn about the whole thing? I learned that one if you one have self belief, you can achieve so much. Mm. And self-belief comes with having a lot of doubters also. That's, it's all part of the game. If you believe in yourself, some people look at you like you're crazy. Like, oh, the hell is this guy? Yeah. Like, who does he think he is, you know? Um, and the one thing I always stood on was my self-belief. I really always believed that I was the best. Always believed that I was the best dog. Always. No one could tell me anything to a point where it went as far as some people misinterpreting that to being arrogant. Mm. Yeah. I've always really felt like, yo, I'm really talented and God has given me a gift. And what I need to do is to take this gift and share it with the world. And hopefully it changes someone's life or it impacts someone positively. Mm. And my message, I mean, I didn't plan for my message to be all about love. Mm. I think that happened. It, it was meant to be that, like that. I remember I used to be part of some development programs where we would sing gospel music. Like there was one specific program that I was part of called COB at UJ when I was studying at UJ, Currents of Blackness. And we would go to different churches to sing some, you know, some, some gospel songs. Uh, it was almost like joy celebration, yeah. but like with students from, from UJ. Um, every time I would do a solo, <laughs> yeah, kid you not. Good luck. Every time I would do a solo, as soon as I start singing my first line, the girls would scream in a church. So that, I, and I remember my instructor used to tell me, he's like, you know, you're not a gospel artist. You're an R&B artist. You can sing gospel all you like, but you are all about that love, that corny, that R&B corny stuff. Yeah. That's you. I like the fact that you know that that shit is corny. Of course, bro. And I made a lot of money from it. <laughs> like that's where the money is. Yeah, the money yeah. is in... <clears throat> committing to it. Like knowing what it is, knowing what some people might think of it, and also just thinking, ah, well, they're not gonna, it's not going to do anything for me. Like other people's opinions are not going to do anything for me. Yeah. How do I feel when I'm delivering my message? That's the question. Yeah. And it always felt like I was doing exactly what I needed to do. I always felt like I was right in my purpose. Mm. So um, I, I can tell you now, the reason why everybody knows Donald today is because at some point I made a decision that I'm going to do this irrespective of what anyone thinks of me. I'm going to do it with all of my heart. I'm going to put, you know, my, my whole energy in it. And I'm also going to compromise certain things in my life. So I never really had a personal life, I mean, because I needed to reserve, like to preserve my energy so that I'm able to do this again tomorrow. Mm. So I've never been in a street person. I've never been in the streets a lot. I've never engaged with a lot of people and had friends and did crazy things that everybody does with their friends. Mm. 
because I've always just wanted to be the best artist I could ever be, you know, and I knew that sometimes to be the best, you have to not do certain things. You have to be, compromise certain things. You have to um, really separate your time really well, like preserve yourself, you yeah. know, stay, you know, I, 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 growing up, I used to love girls a lot, like a lot. Women are beautiful. They really are. They're really amazing. Um, but I had to ask myself what that relationship was going to be for me and how that was going to help me for going forward in the future. So I needed to really, really be careful about that because I also realized that that could be my downfall. My love for women could be my downfall. Mm -hmm. um, and the minute I was inside and I was Donald and you know I was getting booked, I was making money and I had a career, I was taking care of my family, I then realized... Yeah, if anyone ever wanted to take you down, Donald, how do you think they're going to do it? Mm. They're probably going to use a woman. Yeah, that's yeah. the easiest way. Yeah, easiest way to kill a Donald brand. Mm. Because the Donald brand is about women. The message goes straight to the heart of mm. a woman. I mean, women used to love that. The love I know I deserve so much. <laughs> they felt like I was, you know, it was a message for them to tell to their boyfriends. Yeah. Uguti. I'm fair to the way Untanang Akona is not the way. Mm. I know exactly how I need to be loved. The women internalized that song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah so I I had to really be careful in Kuleko about how I was going to move forward. Yeah, I'm I'm curious about the style that you chose um for your R and B. Okay. Number one, you you do a falsetto. Mm -hmm. Um and I was telling Khalkhala how difficult that is. Mm -hmm. Um, because that's almost like I was uh, I was I was trained in choral music mm -hmm. and that's oh. a first tenor. Damn. It's like you're singing in first tenor. Yeah. And it's like you're screaming. Yeah. And it's very strenuous. It is. So for you to have to perform falsetto um, over and over and over, because with the song, you're putting yourself in a trap. Mm -hmm. uh, you're recording the song uh, in a recording environment in a studio, and then you can get out of the falsetto. Yes. But then people love it. Mm -hmm. They wanted to perform it. Now, I have to now you have to now. go live and yeah. sing the falsetto all yeah. the time. I think you're That's talking very specifically about unpredictable. Yes, yes, yes. I was, yeah, yeah, I was playing yeah. that uh, yeah, yeah. to her just to, to illustrate yeah. um, as well. Even I Deserve has elements of first, of falsetto, yeah. first, first, first tenor, tenor yeah. falsetto. Yeah. You yeah. know, um, it, that's your comfortable vocal range? Yeah. So when I was younger, I used to sound like a girl, full on. Oh, damn. Before speaking. My, before, no, singing. Singing, okay. Before my voice broke. Actually, even speaking, I had a very squeaky voice. Sure. As a young boy. And then my voice broke. Then I had a, a bit of a bass. But the singing voice stuck. It still stayed. I always had... So I would have the normal singing voice. Yeah. And then I always had that other pocket in the, at the top. I never knew why I had it. Yeah. But I had it. But the, the, the one specific song that I would say trained me to be fully comfortable in singing falsetto was Women's Work by Maxwell. I played her Women's Work. Yeah, I actually covered that song. I covered that song at the Red Mic Experience, my one man yes, show. Yes, yes, yes. You it's you on YouTube. Show. Yeah. The whole thing in front of 4,000 people. <laughs> you, you haven't seen it? I might, I, I remember you, you did Unplugged at some point with Channel O. Yes, yes, uh, I did. At some point. Yes, I did. So I, I get my things mixed up because I love music. Yeah, like, yeah, yeah. I, I may remember it differently. Yeah. But I remember you with a red mic and uh, uh, promoting it mm -hmm. and singing it. And yeah. I don't know whether you had a glove as well, but you had a... Yeah, at some a, point I used to wear a glove. Yes, yeah. so I know that I would have seen it at some point. Yeah. I don't know if I can remember it now, but... Yeah. um. So that song is the one that got me very comfortable in singing yeah. falsetto. So that's yeah. What I want to get at is that that's you comfortable with it? Yeah, very comfortable. I can do a whole album in falsetto. Damn, man! Like a whole album. Damn. I can do ten songs in falsetto, and I would go on stage and perform them live. Damn! And I said to her that you can get away with it, singing it in studio, yeah. and doing it in an yeah, and hour, then, and then people fixing you, sure, because the, the producer can fix. Yes, they can help things you and out. really make it sound nice. Yeah, yeah, they can. They can do pitch control and everything yeah. else. They can help you out. Yeah. But then you have to perform it. Yeah. Some people. That's a talent. That's a super Thank talent. You. Not so everyone much. has that. Yeah. And for me, I'm curious about sounds and music. Yeah. And I'm like. No, and I tried because yeah. <laughs> I'm a piece of <laughs> singer, but I tried, <laughs> and I'm like, there's no way because I'm, no, I'm, I'm a baritone mm, in, okay, in, yeah, in yeah. choral, so yeah. I'm, I have a low register yeah. when I'm singing. So yeah. you can pull off falsetto, yeah, though. and it doesn't make your voice voice hoarse. Nothing. It doesn't go away. I still this past weekend I had a show. I performed the women's work. Yeah. I perform it in every gig, every gig. It's been like that for years. Um, but also 
also it's how you take care of your voice your, vo- your voice is an instrument yeah. it needs to be taken care of you need to to uh, train it you need to drink a lot of water so i don't drink alcohol so that also helps because that can be that can damage your voice that's great yeah i don't smoke anything so that can also damage your voice so that has helped me be able to i guess sustain my voice um to still sound exactly how i sounded 10 years 20 years yeah. ago yeah yeah that's great and it it speaks to your single mindedness then uh, because you talk about relationships and how they could possibly be a distraction a in what you were trying to do. And mm-hmm. then you talk about not drinking mm-hmm. and not smoking. I think that that's great. Like, that's great self-discipline. Yeah. yeah. I mean, with relationships, you know, just like anyone. And I mean, with me being, I would say, the <sighs> Dr. Love. Someone that really represents love, you know. Yeah. <clears throat> I must have went through some sort of experience, you know. And... I'll tell you this, my career and the music and the messages that are in my music mirrors what I've been through in my life with a certain lady um, who I fell in love with back in 2006. And we've had a very, oh, what's the right English word? Is it this t- tumult, what? tumultuous, tumultuous um, journey together? over the years, um, you know, going in and out of relationships with each other, you know, and it, it was very toxic at some point. Mm. And um, she was, she really became the, the, she became my muse, literally. Like almost all the albums I've ever dropped to this day are based on, have been about her. Most of the songs have been about my relationship with her and, and and they've become some sort of a healing process for me. So this was not all, it's not like I was just that good that I would just write fiction all the way. So a lot of these songs are things that yeah. I really went through. I mean, a song like Crazy But Amazing, which I actually had permanent on yes, the music video. Yes, that's the song. Uh, yes, yeah. that song it's at some crazy, point. But it's amazing. amazing. Yeah, that song specifically was really about my relationship with him and how we went in and out and how... You know, we had so many highs and so many lows and it was just like so crazy. So I have gone through a lot with that relationship and that I would say is the reason why I'm the way I am today. That's probably the reason why I've been single for six years. I've been single for six years. But you that's not the last time you had sex. Absolutely not. Okay. There I'm, you go. I'm human. <laughs> <laughs> Um, yeah. yeah, I'm trying to explore the musical side uh, as well with that mm. first album. Yeah, uh, because a lot of what became you is from that first album. First one, yes. Why do you? Well, decide... second album. Sorry, yeah, the second album. I'm so yeah. sorry. Thank yeah. you. Um, why do you decide to to sing soul music on um, up tempo dance beats? Yes, and you literally maintained it throughout your career. And also, yeah. you actually have acoustic versions of some of your songs because yes. you know that. They might sound they better might, if you yes. if you if you listen just break to them it. down, yeah. And then some people might want to listen to those on Sundays. Yeah, they don't want to be dancing. absolutely, absolutely. Yeah. What, 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 was that clear? No, mm-hmm. no, it wasn't clear. Uh, the decision to go dance was because at the time South Africa was really dance crazy. Absolutely, and I it, it was a business decision that mm. one. It wasn't just. You know, yeah. No, I'm just gonna stick to full on R and B pure. I was like, yo, but. You know, how do I relate? You know, like how AKA was able to find a way to to make a South Af- a proper South African relate yeah. to his music. Yeah. Um, I had to find a way to relate to South Africa. Because I'm I'm a I'm a full on South Africa. Like I love this country. I'm a patriot, you know, and I want I would love to see South Africans are happy, you know. If they're not happy, I am also not happy. And I felt like I I don't think I would get so much uh, satisfaction in being big in Europe and not being big in my country, mm-hmm. you know? Uh, so I wanted to find a way that I can get South Africans to relate to my music. And <clears throat> it was just, you know, when you're in the studio with a, with a really good producer and you just try things out, man, just explore. Mm. And that's exactly what we did. And you pulled album. it off. Like you yeah. put someone else could try it and they yeah. could fake and it, it could, yeah. and they could fake it and yeah. it could flop. Um, you know, you pulled it off. We got used to you in, in that, dance in records, pocket. yeah. But yeah. we still consider you as a soul R and B artist. Yeah. That's actually pretty smart. You actually know, you know your stuff. 
you know stuff because some I love people music. yeah some people would call me other things that don't make any sense and i'm just like uh, you don't really you don't really know this brand yeah. you know <laughs> so you have you've actually analyzed it perfectly that's exactly what it was part of the reason also why a lot of people would still call me an rb artist was because i i deliberately the way i deliver my performances would be like you are watching an R&B artist mm. on stage. Oh yes, yes. On stage you design. Yeah, it's you a design. Full design. It, I've seen yeah. it. I've yeah. seen it. I've seen it on Unplugged. You design it specifically so that I know that, that I'm, this is I'm an, an R&B, R&B artist, performance. Hundred yes. percent. Yeah. Yeah. If, everything. Even the you know the little music breaks where the band is just breaking it down and then I'm speaking to the crowd yeah, 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 and I'm like, your yeah. ladies make some noise. Yeah. <laughs> Come on, <laughs> Doc. You know what the thing is, right? <laughs> I have always <laughs> felt like in South Africa, we just like look down on ourselves, bro. Yeah. We don't think we've got enough talent to be that. I wanted people to look in their own yard to find their Asha. You have to look in America. Oh, yeah. Here. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? I'm good enough. I can stay in, I can be in the same room with Asha. You know, I remember when I, when I, when I got nominated for the BET Awards, 2013. There were a lot of people that, there were a lot of naysayers, you know, even be, before that, there were a lot of naysayers. Ah, but I don't know that he's probably just the one hit wonder or maybe at that time it was a three hit because I already now had three now. So I was clearly not a one hit wonder. Yeah. But there was always people who questioned my talent and, and me being in the position that I was, I was in, you know, and I always expected it. I always knew that it was going to happen, you know. Uh, but I remember being nominated for the BT Awards and thinking to myself, well, here we go. You know, this is exactly what I've always wanted. Mm. Just so that I can also show my people that we are also capable of being in those platforms. And it doesn't matter where you come from. I mean, I'm a, I'm a village boy. But most people don't know. I'm actually a village boy. I was born in a village and I used to herd cattle. I used to take care of goats okay. and... You know what I mean? Like we, I, we don't know that. That's literally where I come from. Yeah. Yes, I then came out as this R&B guy. I speak, I speak fluent English sometimes or whatever. And everyone thinks I went to these white schools. That You're a suburban kid. They, you know what I mean? And, and that, that's not really it. I know what it really feels like to start from the bottom and have nothing. And I wanted that story of me being in America and you know um, rubbing shoulders with those stars to be a lesson. Mm. To any young kid in this country to say it does not matter what they say. You know, if if you, if God has put a journey for you, this is your path. It's your path. It's just for you for, to take it, you know, um, and just believe in yourself. I've always just wanted my life to just be an inspiration to someone else who's coming up. Mm. Always wanted that to be. Just take that myriad for your own life mm. because... Um, I don't think there's anybody who's ever been great who never experienced um, resistance. Yeah. And it's important. Hate. It's important. It's, it's important to experience resistance. Yeah. It's, it's very important. It's, it's a, it's, it builds up your character. 100%. Um, you know, you know how it feels like, you know, the discomfort of resistance yeah. and you know how it feels when you conquer it. 100%. You know, and you, you need that. It's yeah. very important. I think one of the worst things that we do on social media, well, I mean, we are incentivized to do it because you get more likes when you do it. Mm-hmm. When you have an award, yeah. you take a picture of it. Yeah. Um, with it, um, you get a thousand likes, 10,000 likes. Mm-hmm. That's literally the end of a very tumultuous journey, which peaked and thrived and peaked and like it was up and down and up and down. And then at the top of it, you have an award. That award You're yeah. taking a and picture with it and you post it and... 10,000 people see that final result. They don't see everything else. Like the, your build-up, mm. everything else that happened to you, This it's it's dope. Like yeah. I, It's probably one of the things I will never forget. I do a lot of talking with a lot of people, mm. but like that's it's a, it's, a, it's, it's a fascinating story for me. Yeah. Like so your build up. in 2012, 2013, I was nominated for the Metro FM Awards. Mm. Uh, I was that year the most nominated artist with six nominations. Mm. So I went to the award ceremony as... I would say you would say the star of the show. Sure. And when I got there, um, I won my first award for best produced album that year for Train of Love. I went on stage, and I think that the the moment that happened became one of the most, I would say, historical 
moment in pop culture. Because I got to experience what it really feels like to trend. But to trend for a whole three weeks, month, like where people just can't stop talking about it. For me, that was so crazy. Yeah. And the crazy thing is I was trending for something that I'm, I'm supposed to be mad and angry and feel sad or whatever. But I was actually very happy because I knew exactly where it came from. And I also knew that it's actually working for me. So I went on stage and I was thanking people and I was grateful. I was telling people, yeah, I'm really grateful. This is my first award. But more than anything, to win this award and my mother is in the crowd and I cried. National TV. I don't know if you remember that moment. No. You missed that moment. I missed it, yeah. yeah. So that was, that's, that's national TV. And at the time, the Metro FM Awards were so big. They were always on SAPC one Yeah, pink. yeah. It was so big. So every, the whole country is watching. I cried um, on TV and that became the talk of the whole awards for the next three weeks. Literally. You didn't plan to cry? No, absolutely not. Oh, you're cheesy as fuck. Like, you, you, know, uh, you know how to curate this, these no, kind of moments. I can curate a lot of things, but yeah. I can't cre- curate... A, a real moment about knowing that I've literally gotten to this moment where the one person who is believed in me, who one, who gave me life, two, has believed me, believed in me when no one did. Three, is really the only person I can ever cry, I can go back and cry sure. to when things really hit the fan. Yeah. Someone that I know loves me unconditionally. To think about that journey, the fact that I've been in this journey, I've tried and people have questioned me. Family members have said, no, this is not going to work. Even my dad at some point did not believe it was going to work. But this woman has always said, Baba, do not ever give up. And she's there in Durban at the ICC watching her son get his first award. Are you Mm. kidding me? Are you kidding me? Good luck. I'm going to, of course I'm going to cry, dog. This is my mother. This is a woman who has loved me irrespective, you know, and this is the moment that changes my whole life. And it puts her in a very content place. Mm. Why the hell am I not going to cry? Of course I'm going to cry. You can laugh about it and call me names or whatever, but that actually made me more famous. Yeah. I, I, I kid you not. After that, the, the level of my fame went to, it's a whole new level. I was called in places where I never ever thought I would be called. Mm. You know, business, you know, opportunities came um, and, you know, I made a lot of money. Mm. Yeah. There's something that's interesting about you and I'm, I'm getting it now, um, now that I get an opportunity to speak to you firsthand. Mm. Uh, on Train of Love, I think within the first minute of that album, mm. uh, on Denial, you say the Train of Love is coming. Can you feel it? And for me, like, I'm always, I love music, bro. Mm-hmm. And I love sound. Yeah, I can see how you, you know so passionate about and, it. Yeah. And, and. And clearly it speaks to, that's the first song. It's an opening song. Mm. So within the first minute of that album, mm. the train of love is coming. Can you hear it? And in your, al- in your, in your music videos, there's Pam Andrews, Clint Brink. Um, there's Nomza Mombata. Nomza Mombata. There's well. uh, Nomuzi Mabena. Yeah. There's, so it speaks, there's to, everyone. It speaks to mm. designing yeah. purposefully your yeah. shows as well. Yeah. You decided to go red. Yeah. You had a red microphone. You go all in. Like, mm. th- talk to me about that. Like designing... Being specific, being purposeful about what you're doing. Like, yeah. It's not a coincidence that the album is called Train of Love and within the first minute. The first line is Train of Love. <laughs> Dark. You know, ah, it's, no it, it's, it's wild. Like, it's wild. Within the first oh, minute, the Train of Love is coming. Edge, Can you, you hear it? You're giving me goosebumps, bro. Yeah. You know why? Dog, no one has ever gotten it. Not like this. All of these things have obviously been done and designed yeah. very purposefully. You're the first person to interview me. And tell me about the things that I've I've always said, yo, bro, it's so crazy how these people don't get it. Yeah. Like every single thing that I've done has been some sort of a, there's been a theme to it and there's been a concept to it. Um, the Black and White album. Mm. And I've said this on other interviews, but I know people don't always hear those things. Uh, when I was recording that album, the black side of the album was when me and my ex-girlfriend were not together and we were at loggerheads, literally Mm -hmm. almost even really hating each other. You understand? And the white side of the album was when me and my girl reconciled and she was there throughout the process of making the other side of the album. That's why it's called Black and White. Yeah. 
that's why it was it was cut into two because I was in two places during the moment of making that album. Yeah. And it's never like I don't do things just for just. Everything has always been um you know concepted and for you to be able to see it, you know. Um I introduced the Red Mic in 2013 at the Summers when I performed at the awards for the first time. Mm -hmm. And I did that because I knew the whole country would be watching. And I knew that the red mic would be a talking point. Mm. Because you, no one you, in South Africa has never ever you done You in something. your early 20s at some point, like early mid-20s yeah, 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 when mid you do this? Yeah. Mid you know what I'm saying? So I know I, I know how difficult it is to create, bro. And I know there's always some pushback. Like yeah. you, you meet a director that says, no, man, we don't have to do this. You know, or someone who you're recording an album with, like, no, we don't mm. have to do this. But you've always insisted to yeah. do things the way you so want them. So I came with their mic at the summers. Mm -hmm. And they wanted to give me their mic. And I was like, there's no way. I have a mic. Here's the case. Here's the receiver. And this is my mic. I'm using my mic. So you, the sound engineer... So you've already find. thought for them that yeah. they will need a way yes. to connect. Yes. So you have the yeah, solution. because I already know that I know this. I know sound engineering also. Yeah. See, that's why when you, when you take on a career like this, you have to make it a point to know everything about it. You don't have to be a master in everything. I'm not a sound engineer, but I understand sound engineering because I want to sound international sure. in my shows. I want to yeah. sound amazing. Um, the quality of my product. I want my, the quality of my product to speak for me. I don't want to say too much, right? So even with the red mic, there was pushback on certain places, like those productions where they'd say, no, but we already have mics that are in the yeah. system. You can't use a mic. And I was like, well, if I can't use my mic, then I can't perform. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah, yeah, yeah. And, and trust me, those type of things would then also come back as ah Mara, that one is a bit difficult to work with you know what i mean it's yeah, for a bit sure. arrogant for sure. da. and and i also kind of expected that to also happen uh, but for me i always knew that no i'm not arrogant at all i just really really protect what is mine i'm always going to protect what is mine everyone who insists on quality in south africa is somewhat construed as arrogant yeah um you know difficult, difficult to, to work with you know and it's, it's it has a lot to do with the fact that i think when I'm rating my people, and I love this country too, as you described yourself, as a mm. patriot, when I'm rating myself against everyone else, on average, I'm like, nah, you're average. you average. Like, your quality standards are low. So, the, I'm, you're not going to make your quality standards my standards. If I insist on interviewing certain kinds of people, mm -hmm. I, it's because I want to. I if you want something controversial, maybe you can watch something else, gotcha. for example. Yeah. You know, and every I like facet, that, by the way. Yeah. I, I like that you think that way. Yeah, I mean, thank you. Yeah. Thank you. Um, at, at what point do you get um, some label push or an association with the label? Oh, no, no. The label push came... So as soon as I deserve was very big, I then went and sat um, in, in the office with, uh, with the directors at Universal Music because they called for me. And then I went and they wanted to offer me an uh, artist deal. And I was like, nah. I'm what not, does that mean? I'm not, an artist deal is like they will, they're basically giving you a deal. They're going to own everything and you're just getting artist royalties. Mm -hmm. Yes, you, you, are, you are their artist. So for me at that time, I already knew that the only thing I ever wanted to be part of in the business side of things is, is um, partnerships. So I can partner with you. I come with my own business and then we can partner and do this together or, you know, uh, fight for the same goal. So I went to Universal and I said to them, Oh, well, the, 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 the artist deal won't work for me. I can take a licensing deal or distribution. Mm. Yeah, so we, we opted for the licensing deal, which basically all it is is they just license whatever I come with. Whatever I come with that I own, they just license it and put it in places where it can make money for the both of us. Mm. And they also, the, one of the conditions that they also help with a little bit of marketing while I do my own marketing too. So it's, it's, it's more like just a, a joint venture. Mm. Pretty much, yeah. yeah I've, I've asked, I think a lot of artists that I've spoken to have been asking them that question, yeah, so that everyone explains their journey with their record label, yeah, um, so that everyone who's watching who is confused about what they want to do if yeah. you're an upcoming artist, yeah, you know that there's 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 options out there, yeah. And Omar Paputu was saying that he refused it, flat out refused an artist still, yeah, yeah. And I think Uzama Jobi, when I spoke to her, said the same thing mm -hmm. as well with the f help of her father, she, mm -hmm. she refused. An artist deal, or she yeah. signed an, a deal that was favorable to mm -hmm, her, mm -hmm. and I think Ifani as well. Mm -hmm. So, like, I mean, I'm so happy that we're archiving 
and putting out the episodes where, bro, you have no excuse. You're listening to like five or ten different artists who are exactly. telling you you don't you have to. You can't say us. you don't you didn't know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. You don't have to yeah. sign this. So I went straight into a licensing deal literally from the love I know I deserve to this day. So which means I own every single record I've ever released. Yeah, that's yeah. dope. Yeah, I own my masters, I can sell them tomorrow. Yeah. Yeah. You, uh, if if an advert were to come to you to use one of your songs for Valentine's or whatever the case mm-hmm. is, how would that go about? Well, I mean, I can make the deal, but Universal will get a licensing cut. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and 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 they would pay for the duration of the advert, or they could just give you hundred thousand for the song. How uh, do you know how that does, does that work? Um, what I'm trying to get at is the opportunities for a musician to make money from mm-hmm. their music when they mm-hmm. own it. Mm-hmm. It could be in a movie. Mm-hmm. We don't have a big movie industry here, but mm-hmm. maybe it could appear on Ozalo Generations. Mm-hmm. How would they compensate you? Do you know how much, uh, in, in what range they would ah, compensate you? There's never a set, a set fee for anything. It's a negotiation. Yeah, it's a, negotiative, a, a, a negotiation. Um, there's always going to be an offer put on the table mm. with different conditions to them, uh, with a period also. That's very, very important sure. for people to know. You can sign a deal with a with a brand and they'll say for four years, we're going to use your song like this, like that. So mediums on radio, on TV, on the internet, da, 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 and you have to get paid for each and every single medium. Yeah. You know, sometimes they come with a, a, a flat, a, a lump sum to sure. say, yeah, no, we'll give you three million for the next four years um, to use your song. And this is how we're going to use it. And these are the places, these are also the locations because that's another thing. Mm-hmm. You also need to know that you are not necessarily signing a deal of your music to be used in South Africa or just in Africa. It can be used all over the world. Mm. So, and that's why reading the contract is so important because then you know exactly what you're getting yourself into and what you're signing. Uh, but the money is always different. Mm. Yeah, it's never the same. It, it also depends on you because they can come and say three million for four years and you can say, nah, I want 10. Because that's 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 where I that's how I see my 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 song. My song yeah, is that's the value. That yes, you that's put the value. Hundred percent. So it all it really all depends. Um, but you know, sinks are really really dope. Yeah, they they really dope. If you get a sink, you you can it can literally set you up for the next year. What is a sink? A sink deal is basically like an advert, like where they use a song on an advert. Oh, it's a sink deal. wow! So that's money. That's a lot of money. Yeah, yeah. When you see a Prince KP. We on an ad and they're playing a song on yeah on some alcohol brand you must know he got paid oh wow yeah yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. you see prince like, kim is one of those guys that, that we don't we don't know this yeah i was no, speaking no, yeah. to him on the phone actually he says he's recording his album yeah and it's going to come through at some point yeah you get paid and the, the label get paid too yeah yeah the label get paid too so if um, you were signed as an artist by universal they that would, money they would make that money much. would be theirs, yes, and then they would tell you that this is you would get this little one, you're getting one percent of this, whatever the percentage is, yeah, yeah. 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 So it's never advi- advisable for the future, it's never advisable really right now to sign an artist deal. I'm not gonna lie, even though breaking an artist is really difficult, mm-hmm. and when a label does take you from nothing, they are taking a big risk on you, and they don't know whether or not they'll make that money for back. Sure. So it does make sense for them to offer you an artist deal where they say, hey, my brother, all proceeds, you will get 9%. Mm. Normally the artist deal, they start there, 9, 10, 11, 12% mm. of the artist. And everything else goes to the label. Yeah. You know, but it's, it, it, it's all business. It's nothing personal, you know, and it all determines on how much knowledge do you have of how the business works. And um, that will determine the decision you, that you make. You know, um, I think... A lot of artists make the mistake of being very emotional after they've signed certain pro- uh, um, contracts and it mm-hmm. doesn't work for them. And they become very emotional. Unfortunately, when it comes to contracts and, and deals, there's no emotion. And there's no ungrobil. Unless they didn't do what the contract says. Yeah. If they don't do what the contract says, that means ungrobil. But if the contract says you only get 1%, it's only 1%. Even though you... When you were signing the even deal, if you didn't it's know exploitative. enough. Exploitative. Even yes. if the contract could be construed as 100%. exploitative, yes. that this is your labor, this is your work, 100%. but you only are given 5% yes. or 9% yes. of it. Even if it is exploitative, which is not a good thing. You consented to it. Yes, you did. Unfortunately, you will never, you won't win at, in court. The only time you win in court if someone has basically gone against the contract and did some shady stuff. Mm. Yes. Yeah. Um. As an R&B artist, um, <laughs> 
I, I remember watching something got Bobby Brown and with Houston. Yeah. And the advice that he got Bobby Brown was that is when he announced that he's getting married to Whitney Houston, mm. people around him, his team mm. were like, yo, you're an R and B artist. Mm-hmm. Uh, need to preserve the possibility to sleep with you. So it's not a good idea for you to get married. <laughs> Um, so I'm gonna throw that to you. They were giving him advice like, "Yo, you can't get married because women need to preserve, preserve the possibility of fantasizing about sleeping with mm-hmm. you." Yeah. When you're married, they imagine you with that person, mm-hmm. with your wife. Um, have you been purposefully not being openly in love? Like even now, you mentioned that you're single for yeah. the past six years. Six years yeah. Is also like, is it also a consideration of the career? We've never seen you holding babies uh, or with a family. Is it important for you? Or to- really with a girl holding a girl, unless it's on a music video. There you go. Yeah. Like, so t- talk to us about that. Um, purposefully, not necessarily for the matrix of keeping that, you know, that, that R&B, that enigma thing of yeah. wanting girls to... G- girls will, will want you anyway, whether you are in a relationship or not. If you are that hot, they still want you. Actually, sometimes they even want you more when you have a girl. When you have a ring on your finger, you're, yeah, you're, you're yeah. suddenly in demand. Yeah, suddenly. But I've always believed in, and I think this is obviously something that I learned from some of these international artists. I just always, always, always felt like my personal life is my personal life. And it's so difficult to fully enjoy yourself when, you, when, when people are watching you, when the eyes are on you, uh, because you get judged so much for every little move that you make that there are just certain parts of your life that you just need to keep for yourself so that you can enjoy them when there isn't any third parties trying to intervene. The unfortunate thing about being famous is that once you share your life in that manner and you create that demand that, it, that people want to know more about what is going on in your personal life, not, not just in your music, you're, you're inviting everything. It could be good, could be really bad. Most of the times, you're really inviting the bad. Because people don't like to see nice things happen, unfortunately. They yeah. want to see destruction. People love drama. They want to know that you and your girl are not good. <laughs> you know? Um, one of the things that became a really big, big issue in my relationship with my ex was, you know, the, the whole, the public thing. The, the thing of, yo, everybody needs to know that you're my man. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. Because there's a demand from her side, there is that thing of yes. she can see that pe- women yes. want you. Yes. Therefore, as some form of validation for her, yeah. she needs to claim you. Yes. You know. So At that- some point, we we did have a fight about the fact that she felt like you know all these girls you know are too familiar and you know and I'm not like I'm not I'm not uh, I'm not going out of my way to make them understand that there's a woman in my life mm. and I told bro. It's so crazy at the time when we argued about it, but I actually really understood where she was coming from. I understand that, you know, that the feeling of really wanting to know that you are secure in your relationship and that your, your man understands that, yes, there might be some screaming girls, but that should never come into the relationship and disrespect it. You know, she, at the end of the day, she needs to be disrespected as the woman in my life. But I was very steadfast on saying, it's not a good idea for us to be that public because, you know, and I'm not saying we must hide. No, we never, and, and I never, we never hid. Yeah, we really you almost, go to a coffee shop. We do everything to. that yeah. we do. Yeah, we go to the movies. We go to the to the to the store to buy groceries. We did sure. everything that we needed to do. The only thing that I wasn't a big fan of was one to strategically go to industry events because industry events call for media and blogs and yeah. you know if you enter with someone already if you're gonna sit with them the whole time already there's like that whole you know and my ex is someone that is in the industry that's very much known so i because i've always been so intentional about my my career i just looked at our thing and i was like yo this is a this is a disaster for me this is one day is going to be disaster because this is too juicy for the media yeah, you yeah, know? yeah. and i loved it so much all I ever wanted was to preserve our relationship and possibly go all the way and get married and have kids. And really one day when we don't have to fully be in this in this industry, we can take a, a, a back seat and enjoy each other for the rest of our lives. This is the woman I wanted to marry, dude. Like I, I've never wanted to marry anyone in my life. She was the only one. So 
my fight with her was always baby please let's protect this this is way too special for me the last thing i ever want is to wake up to a sunday world newspaper about our shenanigans about something that happened that got construed to something that it isn't um, she didn't see it that way at the time unfortunately and that's one of the things that kind of like put a strain in, in our relationship so you couldn't be beyonce and jay-z I just never wanted that. That, that whole power couple thing. I've never wanted that thing has never looked attractive to me. Mm-hmm. I think part of the reason is because coming into the entertainment industry, I never really came in for the fame. I really just wanted to be known for my music and everybody must know how dope I am as an artist and be able to make money too so that I can live and, and take care of my family. That the whole thing of being a celebrity, A-list, B-list, I've never been interested in any of that, bro. Because I've I've been able to see in my studying of the industry and analyzing, I've been able to see the dark side to it. Oh, yeah. Way too dark. Oh, yeah. You know, and, and I'm such a human, bro. Like, I'm really just a human. You can ask my brother. We literally just live our lives like normal human beings until we step out and now uh, and people get to see me. Then it's like, ah, uh, you know. Now I have to kind of deal with that, you know. But I just generally just want to be a guy. I just want to be a guy. You know, and just do make my dreams come true without any backlash or any intrusion of what is it that I'm doing in my kitchen or in my living room. It's no one's business. Yeah, it's yeah. It's, it's 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 refreshing to hear someone um who was pretty clear about that because everyone it seems as though maybe 90% or 99% of the people would rather want that. Mm-hmm. I saw it too. I saw I saw the trappings of this. I don't drink, I don't smoke, and I'm like, nah, I'm not going to be able to fit in there. Yeah. If I'm yeah. invited in yeah. any of these things, yeah. like, no. Maybe it's just not my scene. Yeah, yeah. no, I'm not going to be able to yeah. fit in here. You know, the pretentious relationships and mm-hmm. all of that stuff. And there's a lot of those. Yeah. Yeah, there's a lot of those. You don't know why a guy is excited to see you. Yeah, it's, it's weird. Yeah, yeah cool, like, like a dog. <laughs> it's weird. Yeah, dog. Yeah, nah, it's dog. Because eventually, it's, yeah. there's gonna be a knife on your back. Eventually, yeah. at some point, yeah. if you allow it. Yeah. So I've, I've, I kind of keep to myself, and I think now, by now, a lot of even my peers in the industry know. Ah, they know Donald how he is, but I'm nice to everybody. Yeah. Yeah, because I, I, I'm, I'm all for leading with love. I'm all about that. I, I, I don't like controversy. I don't like it when, when my peers are fighting with each other. Actually, that's the one thing that I remember. Very early on in my career, I made a vow to myself. No matter how much I clash with a colleague in the entertainment industry, I will never publicly have a back and forth with, mm-hmm. with a colleague. I will never do that. Mm-hmm. They could possibly send something my way, but I would never respond. Because we can always meet. We are in this industry together. Yeah. We can always meet and have a conversation. You can always have a phone call. Yeah, I will never fight with someone who's an actor, who's a producer, who's a musician, who's a rapper, who's a... I will never... That makes no sense. Our industry is so small. The, 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 the opportunities are so far in between. We need to actually stick together. Because when we are together, we, we create even bigger opportunities mm. for us and we can all eat. Us fighting amongst each other and speaking badly... Um, 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 about each other or even to each other doesn't actually build anything. Mm. Yes, we can hold each other accountable. I'm I'm very much for that. I can hold you f- accountable. If, if I mean, obviously, also if it got something to do with me, we can have a conversation. You know what I mean. I also don't like instilling myself too much in people's business. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. 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 It's very important to mind your business. Yeah. Minding your business is a skill. Yep. Um, if if your brother or your kids were to tell you that they wanted to explore R and B, what you've done with what precisely what you did mm-hmm. in South Africa, would you tell them that it's lucrative? Would you tell them it's a good idea for them to do that? Uh, taking into consideration how many people stream music, um, how many people goes to shows specific because like, this is a dance dominated country, unfortunately. Yeah. yeah. Um, you know, I don't even care for dance, but it is what it is. It's gotcha. a dance dominated country. Dominated, yeah. Would you would you encourage it? Like is it lucrative for for someone to be an R and B artist, you did it successfully. Mm. You designed it so that it's successful for you. Yeah. But would you encourage someone else to do it? I would. I think I would. I. I. I, I oh, that's a tough one. That's a. That's a really, really good question. But I think the first thing for me, what's what's important is one. I would never discourage them to enter into something they really want to do. If sure. It's something they really. If love. they want to do it. Yeah. Um, I think more than anything, I would need to be brutally honest about the realities 
of the industry, the market, the business, the dynamics, um, and try to kind of give them the opportunity to plan ahead and possibly strategize the way I did, because I strategized. I was also told that the type of artist that I... Actually, let me tell you a really interesting story. <laughs> I So I was discovered by Malaika as a solo artist. Oh. Yes. But I Malaika was, is a group. The group, yes. So I was discovered by the group. All of them liked you. Yes. Yeah, so I met them at a... And McDonald's. all three of them were... They were there. They were there. They were okay. all there. And they all endorsed me after that encounter. So I met them at... Um, at, 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 at Carlton Center at a McDonald's. I was on my way to practice. Uh, I was going to practice at Cosmos. I was playing for under-19, John sure. Cosmos at that time. And I, I used to walk from Bramfontein, where I used to stay at my flat, all the way to Rosatinville, where the John Cosmos uh, Academy is. And I went past Carlton Center, and then I, I, I saw them at McDonald's, and I went up to them. Something just said, go up to them and tell them you are a fan, because I really was a fan at the time. Um, and they were blowing up. They were the, the group at mm -hmm. that moment. Um, I told them that I was a really big fan, and they were like, oh, thank you, thank you so much. And I, I didn't ask for a picture. It does, it was never been my thing, because yeah. I always felt like I was special. People need to take pictures of me. <laughs> <laughs> that's, I'm sorry, but that's, that's yeah. always been my thinking. What I said to them when I was, after telling them that I was a fan, I said, uh, by the way, I can also sing. And Jabu, the late Jabu, yeah, the late Jabu yeah. was just because Jabu was very forward. He was like, oh, you can sing. Sing for us. Sing for us. <laughs> now. <laughs> Do it now. <laughs> they had a meeting with their manager at the time uh, by the name of Stacey Gooley. So they were not there to take pictures with fans. They were having or... a meeting. Okay. I think they were having maybe like some something to eat, like McDonald's and Yana, but also kind of dealing with some business. Yeah. They were just chilling. Um, Stacey Gooley was there, who was their manager at the time. Um, very beautiful lady. I had a crush on her. <laughs> <laughs> um, then they said, I'm a singer. And I sang. I sang Mkhao Pela Man. Their song. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. I sang Bongani's parts. Because I used to I used to check Bongani's verses. Because I used to sure. feel like I sound like him. He sounds like me. That's actually what really drew me to Afropop also. Because there's also that part of me. The Afropop side. Yeah. That most people hardly ever think I about. only heard you in one Venek song or two. Mm. The, yeah, the, the Zulu one. I think. I'm in a couple. Yeah, I'm in a couple. I've got a couple of. Actually, that was. I was gonna ask you that. That the, why did you specifically uh, stick to English? If 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 Afropop, like mostly speak stick to English. Yeah. If Afropop. When I do the I do the dance in English most of the time. Yeah. But when I go Afropop, I sing in either Zulu. In Venek. Or, yes, in Venek. Yeah. Um. So I sing. Oh, oh, <laughs> I sang that song. Yeah. That exact verse. Yeah, that was their breakout song. Yes. They lost it, bro. They were like, what? There's no way. They're like, there's no way. I remember Jabu making fun of, of Bongani. He said, ah, Bongani, we've got Bongani 2.0. Yeah, 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 yeah. Ah, yeah, yeah, yeah. You've got competition, you know? <laughs> and they told me, you're not going to practice today. You're going to sit here with us. We're going to walk out of this place mm. together. You are now part of Malaika. Right Damn. there. Uh, what's going to happen is you're part of the team. We're going we're gonna to grow you to be your own artist. We'll record an album for you. Uh, you, will, you will also be our, our, our thing, our, um, our, 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 our backing vocalist when we're doing live band sure. sh shows. And you're just part of the team now. And that's exactly what happened. From then on, I went literally everywhere with Malaika. Until... A point where there were days where, for example, Bongani would be sick and couldn't make it for gigs. I would be a Bongani stand-in. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would be part of my like singing in Bongani's verses. And like it was just my, my career has been like a dream, bro. Someone's build-up is not a coincidence. Yeah. And it goes back to the thing of people seeing final products yeah. and thinking that it's a coincidence. Yeah. So there's no way you know your way around people and radio stations and marketing and all of that if you're not with Cleo and if you're not, if you if you don't if it, get to meet Malaika, Malaika yeah. as well. Now, speaking of that, after all of that happened, while we were busy constructing my solo career with, with Jabu, because Jabu was actually the one who took it upon himself mm. to be my producer, and the other guys would just fill in and help me write certain songs with me, and then Bongani would also produce one or two songs. But the main person was Jabu. Mm. I went and had a meeting with Stacey Gulia. Their manager? Yes. Um, 
she was a very very direct person mm. yeah she didn't speak she didn't go around circles when she spoke she was very she spoke exactly what she felt and i wanted to ask her for advice and to possibly see if i could get her to manage me because now i'm going into this thing and i really want to be a solo artist i want to be successful like malaika and i'm not going to lie she said to me uh i i really don't see it donald i don't see how you fit into the market i don't see how south african young is she white no color she's black black she's black yeah okay she's black she told me she didn't see how i would relate or black people would relate to me it got because i'm just I had cornrows at the time just light in complexion boy seemed a bit soft a bit timid nah she told me straight to mm. my face inside in this office is, this is outside outside the, the, me the, the voice like i'm just trying to th- see it from her side yeah. i can see the look oh, yes, not yes. working out yeah. but outside the so she's not making any judgment about your no. voice your skills no. on sound no i mean she she was all for me being part of you know helping my like and being a, 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 a stand in and also being a back and vocalist yeah. because she really believed i had she can see voice. that you do yes in terms of my voice yeah. but when she looked at the market yeah she didn't think that it would ever work that people would never gravitate towards me and she told me straight to my face sometimes Do you, you know make how it work though you know how that bro i've yeah. stuck with that bro yeah but i respect her because she didn't she wasn't saying it to really break me down she really just wanted to be honest in the way that she saw it and she told me and she said it wouldn't work she said it wouldn't work and yes at some point i was a little bit mad at that because i felt like yeah no you didn't believe in me blah, 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 blah. i'm going to show you I did have those But you need that, that though. Yeah. You you need that. Yeah. Like a lot of what I do is like fuck you. Yeah. yeah, yeah. No, you. I understand that. I understand yeah. the attitude. The fuck you attitude. I totally get it. I'm I'm from there. That's exactly how I've I've had to get to this point. I've yeah. had to say I don't have to say fuck you to your face. Yeah, no. It's yeah. A, it's a, it's a thing here. Yeah. yeah. It's a thing, yeah. yeah. Like, yo, fuck you. I'll show you that. Yeah, yeah. So so I I remember that very well. And she wasn't the only one, man. There's a lot of people that just never saw it. The person who really believed it was was clear. Cleo yeah. saw me once, man. He's actually Cleo even saw me as a backing vocalist for Zonke. When I say backing vocalist, I mean he never heard me sing a solo. A solo part. He heard me sing as a backing vocalist at Zonke and invited me to the studio talk yeah. to record one of the songs on Escalade Ninety Five. That's one of the things I did even before people knew me. I was featured on DJ Cleo's Escalade Ninety Five on a song called. I don't know if it's called I miss you or I love you I don't really remember but he he definitely saw it from a distance because Cleo is 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 a is a taste maker he really loves music so much and he knows talent he can he can he can recognize it mm. and he gave me an opportunity and he taught me everything about the music industry the music business he taught me everything literally about how to behave around the people in the industry how to carry yourself the professionalism thereof the money everything the fame how to deal with that he literally taught me every single thing even though my blow up did not happen with him i'm always going to be grateful to him yeah did he at the time had have uh, ubricks who did he have around no, as, by, as by artists? the time i was signed bricks had just left okay and they were in a beef oh damn yeah they were in a beef at the yeah. time yeah you remember anyone else who was there at the time because you're saying he used um, to take you I everywhere had, uh, dj what 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 eh? dj what what yeah yeah because yeah, it was very close with yes, dj what dj what what was there everyone else had left actually it yeah. was just me and dj what what okay <laughs> at that time yeah interesting i yeah. remember going to the summers with him um, i was a nobody and he won an award for most selling what what he's always Remember? killed he was winning those ones he's always in the killed beginning that of industry. those those downloads yeah yeah, yeah. He was he's always killed that most downloads what, 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 and then he went on stage <laughs> actually no hold on briggs went on stage first after winning an award because briggs quite old, yeah like. and then he went and said yeah hey exactly oh, remember. Remember, remember that this, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And he said, exactly, Uluzi. <laughs> At that time, I'm sitting with him here. I'm sitting right next to him here. I was his partner. I was literally his protege. He's not, went, he's not mumbling anything. Like, he's not pissed off. No, no, no. I'm looking at him. After he says that, I'm looking at him. He's giving that grin. You know, Cleo is a, a very emotionally intelligent guy. Yeah. So he just went, mm, okay. Then later on, in the awards, he I wins remember. an award. Yeah. Then he goes on stage. 
Do you know what he said? He said Uba no Luzili. Yes, I remember left. that. Remember moment. that? Yeah. Classic. Yeah. Okay. Yo, you know, can I tell you? Every time when I think about Cleo and how he was and just his vibrato, I always like wonder how he if that moment happened now during or if we had uh, what's his uh, social media back then. He was gonna be a huge star. Yeah, he was already a star. But I'm saying yeah. he, he was gonna be one of those uh, those guys you knew if you wanted clicks, you have to have him in your platform sure. because he, like Cleo, never held anything back. If he, whatever he felt about you, he would tell you to your face or he'd speak about it. He didn't care. He, he's that type of a guy. He was he's so real and so truthful, bro. This indi- too real for this industry. Yeah, you understand. So you know i i always wonder what he we, he could have been like if if there was social media at the time but it was so entertaining though people yeah. liked it you yeah. you you enjoy that period and you learned a lot from that so much yeah. just watching i was a nobody nobody knew who i was sure yeah but and you said you took everyone's number bro i met everybody so by the time i deserve a blowing up i knew i've got a number for this person this person can help me with this i've got a number for this. so i did all of this by myself mm. Without a label, without anything, I literally connected this and then I already knew what roles who was playing. Mm. Was there any back and forth between you and uh, you and him about signing? Or were you signed no. for a specific period? So he called me. To sign, he called me in. Actually, after we did that collaboration on his calendar five, mm-hmm. he called me three months later to offer me a contract. And then I obviously said yes, because I knew he, he, he made stars and I really wanted this. And for me, this was a big opportunity. Mm. So I took that and, you know, I even lived in his house for, 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 for a small while, you know, because, you know, Joburg and, and, um, and rent and all that, I didn't have any money. Um, then he gave me a contract a few months later. And then after that, I recorded the album. The album had that Afropop stuff. I actually mm. started with Afropop. Mm. And um, the one song that came out of that album that some people might know is a song called Know You Better. But for the longest time, this song was a big song on on radio, on Sunday shows. Yeah. Because it, it was a ballad. I want to see if I can, let me just give me a moment. You probably know this song. And yeah, because I want to see if I know it because I want to yeah, I want to go on Spotify and see if yeah. I can. If actually, I, can I don't even it. think it's on Spotify. Hey. Me, uh, well, on, on YouTube. On YouTube yeah, it should be YouTube. there. It should be there on YouTube because I, I, I think I know, you know the, the song, song that you're talking you about. Because you know what happened? It has now played over the I years. I want to get played. to know yes, you better. That's my song. I know the that song. That was the yeah. first yeah. ever song that oh, I yeah, ever released. Yeah, yeah. But it didn't blow up yeah. when we dropped it. But it was it. playing on Metro. It was playing on I Metro consistently. That. Yeah, I remember that. Actually, I'll, I'll be honest with you. That song is is what has really kept me alive also with royalties. Yeah. I've made a lot of money over the years. It's like a catalog song. It became a catalog song for mm. me. Even though it didn't break, like it didn't give me that my big break. Because at the time it was just here. It was just here mm. when it came out. And then that's when I also left. And when I left, the conversation was, uh, Morena, because we used to call each other Morena. I was like, Morena, uh, you know, I'm a bit frustrated by how things are right now. Um, we, we, we haven't achieved the things that I, th- I thought and hoped that we would have achieved by now. And I'm not blaming you or anything like that. I, can, I, I do understand how difficult it is also to start an artist from scratch. I can see it. I mean, I'm part of it. I'm there with you. And you've done everything in your power to try and put me in places. You know, even with me basically being his travel partner, it was his way of getting me to be known by the right people in the mm. industry and to be given the opportunities. But I also, obviously, at that time, I also felt like things are going a little bit too slow and that maybe I need to try something else. So I said to him, Morena, I think I've figured out what I can do on my own. Please let me go. Mm. Give me a, a, a clearance and I'm starting my own label and then I'm going to do this. I've got a plan. There was no argument. He literally totally understood. He did He did say he was a bit sad that things had to end because he really believed in me. He really wanted, he had plans or whatever, but he totally understood and he gave me gave me my, my clearance and, and I left. But he will remain. He will always be possibly the most important element in my mm. journey. You got to see him work um, yes. in studio. Yeah, I saw him. And for, for us, I mean, outside looking in, people who love music like myself, yeah. you wonder, you're like, what the hell? How did he make that? How did he create that? Yeah. Like, how is he like as a, as, as, as a producer? He's crazy. How how quick his pro- is his process? And how good is his ear for a sample or a sound? He's a genius. One of the few we have of our time. He's a music genius. He can play five different instruments. Yeah. Um, he just hears other things that people don't hear. 
his bases. I mean, I can I swear to God, I can say Cleo used a log drum some point back in the day. Mm. We just didn't know. I'm telling you there's a song, yeah, Cleo, that has a log drum in it from back then. Yeah. He just used to go the other way with his production. He always wanted to just that's why you could tell a DJ Cleo production. Yeah. Literally, mm. even before he says this is a DJ club, you could hear it. Because he was just... And again, one of the things that I, I learned from him, which I also learned from Asha, from uh, you know all the people that have inspired me, they never... Um, what can I say? Neglect the relationship they have with the music. Aha. Uh -huh. They can neglect the industry, uh -huh. the business, the what, 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 uh -huh. what. Music remains the common, the, that's the common denominator. The minute you, you, you don't like music or you're not inspired musically, you're, you've lost it. And for me, that's how I've always tried to remind myself of that is, D, do, do not ever fall into the trap of, you know, the superstardom and the da 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 da, -da. The music, papa. That is what introduced you to the people. Yeah. That's what got the people to love you the way they do today. So take care of the music, take care of that relationship. Yeah. One 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 example to illustrate that is there's a there's a lot of people who want to be stars in film, in football, in music, mm -hmm. but it never occurs to them to sit down and watch a football match. But you want to be a football star. Mm. I, I I I was I saw a lot of people's uh, so Spotify gives you a roundup yeah. every year of yeah. oh you've listened to X amount of songs, mm -hmm. X amount of minutes. So when I got mine, it was like over around three thousand songs Jeez. that I would have listened to In one last year. year. Yeah, last year. Yeah. That's like on average maybe between ten and fifteen songs per day. Jeez, bro. That's only on Spotify because I listen to music in different yes, platforms, yeah, right? Yeah. And I'm like, there's no way you can be a great producer without listening to music. And I'm not even a recording musician. I just love music for the love. The relationship with your art is very important. Number one. You can be a star, but if you're a filmmaker, it's important to catch up with other filmmakers. Mm -hmm. Look at what the different mm -hmm. angles, mm -hmm. new cameras that are coming yep. into the industry. And Look all at of the story uh -huh. and be moved by those and think, damn, that, that is dope. Yeah. So that's also part of the reason why I'm a fan of other people. So I'm a huge fan of a lot of artists, mm. specifically for what I pick up as special in them. I mean, I, 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 I saw the, 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 I mean, I've literally, I, I, I know others can argue this, but I'm definitely the most, the number one fan of AKA. I've been from day one, day one. I can tell you what happened when and how. Yeah. Because. I just like, I was just like, yo, this, this is different. Like I've always been a student of the game. I, I watch everybody that comes up. And when AKA came out, I was like, yo, this is just different. The mm -hmm. energy is different. He's just different. And, and whatever he's going to do with his industry, one day we're going to look back and only realize then when he's gone that, oh damn, we were actually experiencing history, but we just didn't know yeah. we were in it. We were not aware. We were not aware. At the time. Yeah. No, no, it's bigger than life. Him. Yeah. Um, I mean, when I first discovered Nasty C, I knew. Oh. oh, I knew. Oh, oh I knew. Oh. I knew. Because I listen to music across Ooh. across the board. Yeah. It's when I first, now with the new artists, when I first discovered um, Stana, Young yeah. Stana. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I knew. I can tell you now, if you sit with Young Stana, it's more than about the fame. It's not about anything. It's deep. I know. I just know it. I see it. You can pick it up. I, I, I listen. Those lyrics, those are not coming from nothing. He's a deep kid. He's he's inside that. That thing means so yeah. much to him. Yeah. When yeah. I heard Nasty for the first time on Hell No, I'm like, woo, yeah. okay. Oh, whoa, yeah. whoa. It's different. Oh. It's different. Oh, it, it, they, and being a hip hop fan, I'm like, nah, you can tell when this one, this one has just been propelled by the gods yeah. to say, here you are. Special. I'm rewarding you with yeah. this. And another one that I've I only started listening to him last year, mm -hmm. but it's been here forever is A Reese. And I listened Ooh. and I'm like, what Ooh, the hell? Reese. What the hell? Ooh. Another thing, go back to them and watch their relationship with the music. Mm -hmm. It does not matter what they achieve in their lives and their careers. The music is ultimately the thing that they put on a pedestal sure. on a pedestal. Sure, that's why that's why they're so reluctant to do interviews. Yes. And I get it. I I 
I'm biased that I, I would it. like them to do interviews because I'm in the industry to do interviews, mm. but I get it. Like, but you understand also they're scared of a lot. There's a lot of things. There's a lot of like, there's a dark side to this, to this industry that scares people like that. Yeah. You know? Um, Tennis Oma's why? Oof. It's different. Brother. She's godly though. Yeah, no, no, no. Damn. It's, uh, it's, uh, it's, yo, bro. Tanisha was one of the reasons why I even got to do the Red Mike experience at Carnival City. Yes. My own, my one-man show. Yeah. Because I watched her, her two DVDs. And I was just like, yo, this is just... Well, I think she did Ibokwe, uh, yes. at the album. And then I, I, Nami, that's when I started to realize, oh, okay, there's a lot of people that are galvanizing behind it. Yeah. She was already a star by yeah. that point. Mm, yes. But then you see the visual presentation of it. Mm -hmm. Like, oh, wow. Yeah. She's this big. Yep. You, you knew it. But when she she shows you on a DVD, it's real. Oh, yeah, it's so real. It's in it's in the it's in the eyes, bro. If you want to see the uh, that an artist is really truly an artist, look them in the eyes when they do their thing. It's all in the eyes. With with Tandy, so you can see she she has eliminated every negative energy there is in that place. Uh -huh. She's now above it, uh -huh. and she controls the the room. She's controlling the energy. You know, uh, it's 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 artists artists like that for me, man. Very special, and I've been so lucky to even meet some of the international um, artists who have inspired me, like Asha. You know, I got to meet Asha, and it was probably the best day of my life. And he was the most humblest, more humble than some of the famous people I've met in this country. <laughs> <laughs> that happens sometimes. That yeah. happens sometimes. Very humble guy. How how important is it for you to block out the nonsense? Because I. I, I I do this in everything that I'm doing. Yeah. All the YouTube channels that I'm participating in mm -hmm. and everything else. And I, I, I don't have friends. I, I, I'm sure you need a social life for this, like every now and then. But I'm very finicky. I'm like, okay, I don't want this. I don't need family drama. I don't need all of this. Mm -hmm. I just need to be focused on the things that on I'm the doing. That you're doing. How important is it for you that when you're recording an album, when you're recording shows or planning a one-man show, that you block out all of that nonsense? But people don't get it. Yeah. People who want to be next to you, want to be next to you. But you want to be thinking about this. When I knew that you were going to come, uh, since last week we were speaking, mm -hmm. I told Rauchel, I've been thinking about you since last night. That's and, the, and the day before, yeah. like thinking about the angles to do this. And if there's family drama, it takes you away from thinking about that. 100%. Every now and then I'm going to revisit. I'm, gonna, I'm watching content, living life. And then for an hour, I'm thinking, where can we go with this interview? Yeah. And people don't get that. So there's an element of you, if you really want to do what you do at the highest level, there is an element of being selfish. That yep. you kind of have to have to be a little bit selfish with your time, with your energy, with your presence. Because like you're saying, man, it's just everything's about energy at the end of the day, man, especially in our industry. Everything's about that. Like this interview was not going to be great and it wasn't going to flow as great if the energy wasn't right. Yeah. Um, but everything's about energy. When I prepared for the Red Mike experience in 2016, <sighs> tough. Tough, tough time of my life. The best moment in my career, but also the most toughest. I even lost a little bit of weight mm -hmm. at that time. Uh, but obviously people wouldn't really notice because I was also, I was still in the gym. I was still doing my push-ups every day, still trying to eat, but I had a lot of stress. There were too many things that were involved. Um, but I totally cut out the world because I also didn't want to hear some of the opinions and the advice that would take me off the rails. Um, I think it's important to take advice, but I think it's also important to know where you are taking that advice from, Absolutely. where it's coming from, who it's coming from. I've always tried to keep certain people around me for that specific thing because I know that when they speak, I'm going to hear them. I'm going to sure. listen. But a lot of the times, you know, all the other noise that comes from the outside, for me, I, a lot of it is just noise. It will confuse you. It's a distraction. It will. It will distract you. So... Um, th th there's a level of, of, of selfishness that you gotta have for you to be the best in what you do. And um, some people are gonna look at it as a negative thing, but you also need to be okay with that. You know, I, I think now what has helped me, dog, is that I'm okay with people thinking whatever they want to think about me. I'm really, really okay. Mm. Yeah. What and, and it doesn't mean that when I see them, I'm going to be mad at them and now not even say hi to them. Sure. No. I'll still greet them even. Yeah. Yeah. What does an award do for a guy like you? Um, you know you're dope already. Yeah. Um, you know you have a fan base. 
it's nice to win an award. In fact, I feel like if I'm not going to win, don't invite me, don't nominate me. Got you. Type of thing. You know, I have that monstrous yeah. attitude of like, yo, I know I'm dope in what I'm yeah, doing. Yeah. Don't invite me, don't, you know. But what does it do for you? Sometimes I don't give a fuck about it. You've won it, it's here now. Maybe you get 50,000 for it, you know, which I've experienced in my other life in football. Nice. And I'm like, ah, oh, fuck it. Okay, it doesn't matter anymore. Yeah. Does it does it does it does it help any way, shape, or form for you in terms of how you look at them awards, how it affects your music, how it affects your per, your um, your perception of yourself? Mm -hmm. All of the above, all of the above. It definitely does help. Um, specifically now in my career, nah, it won't do much for me anymore because of what I have already achieved, right? So I think the award, I think the awards that I have received so far have done the job. Mm. You know, so now I don't do it for that anymore. At some point I did. At some point I really felt like, yo, I need that recognition. I need someone to say, and the winner is Donald. And yeah. I must scream and I must go on stage and I must do the dance if I'm doing the dance. <laughs> but I, you know what I mean? And, 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 and I must take a pause and look at everyone and say, and you're yeah, man, yourself. yeah, we did it. You know, you, you, you do need that moment. It does, it does have a very important psychological effect. Mm on what you do going forward. I don't like awards that seem like they, they've been won because of maybe some sort of, I don't know, connections. Yeah. And uh, like, I don't like it if it feels like the person doesn't deserve it. It just doesn't, it's got a bitter taste. There's a degree of dilution now because yeah. I remember, because I'm hip hop, yeah. uh, primarily when I yeah. grew up, I loved hip hop. Yeah. I remember that in the summer award category, the last time around, um, there was Kid X and I think there was Blackie and I think uh, there was MT, which was my favorite album mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. There was A. Reese. That's how I got to discover A. Reese's music for the first time. Yeah. I felt that, and I'm not trying to argue. Mm -hmm. I'm just giving an opinion that based on the sound i listened to all of those albums mm -hmm. and i thought blakey was the least amount of time i've ever listened 20, there was also 25k peli Machiavelli, mm -hmm. and blakey i would have listened i'm very patient with music because i love sounds yeah. and music um blakey i would have listened to less than 10 minutes gotcha. because it was not directed to me i was not the target market gotcha. i thought that that was not uh, the hip-hop that I'm, I'm i'm conditioned to listen to mm -hmm. and i thought a reese at a level of skill that was the best album amongst all of them mm -hmm. and i thought um um mt the logan album was my favorite because it was melodic it was gotcha. beautiful yeah right so blackie blew all of those niggas out of the water with the numbers 13 times platinum whatever the platinum it was yeah and it won and people would look at it as well it, it validates the fact that it won because of the numbers mm -hmm. and i thought you know what no ways yeah if you put I those gotcha. albums side by side mm -hmm. no ways yeah, yeah you know so for me maybe the the question even comes from that that you know what with, with these awards when you look at them you're like oh, i'm better than all of you yeah like yeah. my my body of work yep. is better than all of yep. your niggas so i don't care if i get awarded that's why i would always advise for one not to internalize when it comes to awards, yeah. don't don't expect, don't have high expectations of winning. So my relationship with awards has, has, has always been, yo, it's dope if I win, but I'm just happy that I'm re I'm nominated because I know what the, for me that is the biggest. It, it, I mean, uh, sorry, it all sounds um, like a cliche though. I, no, I, I've never understood it. No, no, it isn't. And also, don't look at it like it's like yo, you're just accepting second best or no, 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 no. It's not that. In a calendar year, you are literally top four, mm -hmm. or you are in a group of people that have been chosen to have affected the industry or, you know, have affected culture positively. Mm -hmm. You are counted in that. So that is just, it's a, it's a, it's a slap, it's a, it's a, it's a slap on, 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 on the back. It's a pat on the, right? back. A pat on the back to yeah. say you are, whatever you, you, you believe you are, you actually are. You yeah, are doing the right thing. There were thousands of albums that of were released. Of course, there's always th thousands of albums that, 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 that are That were that are released in that period. In, in that period, right? But you are there, you are counted, right? The winning part, unfortunately, you have no control over. Mm. The people who have control are in offices and they decide and they've got their own reasons why. It has absolutely nothing to do with how good or not so good it is against the others. Mm. And that's why I'm saying, as, 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 as long as I'm nominated, then I know I'm in the right direction for that year. Yeah. So you don't internalize, internalize the loss. You're saying no. to, uh, to musicians, you're saying, don't internalize yeah. the loss. Basically, I'm saying, I know that I could have basically been the best album there. I know that I'm probably the best album. So make I'm, I'm, I know I'm a winner already. 
So you not you you can't come in my face and like rub it in my face and say, yeah, you won. It actually means nothing because you don't know how and why they chose you. Mm. What is the reason? Like you were saying now, they chose Blackie because of the numbers. And if we really listen to the album, we'll probably find that another album was actually way better sonically. Yeah, music. sonically. Yeah. The, almost all of them were better sonically. 100%. And, and it speaks to what hip hop is today. Mm -hmm. Aries wiped the floor with almost all of those albums. Yeah, um, and then Logan for me because I like melodies mm -hmm. and I, I listen to MT I, I listen to to it maybe collectively five to ten hours over like a three or four month period Jeez. L just listening on a plane yeah. going to places the Logan album I was like shit more this is personal so, yeah it's, awesome. it's, 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 it's melodic mm. and I'm like okay how do you decide to do this because it's so beautiful mm. he could he could he could have decided to rap but he's not rapping he's genius, trapping that's and, another that's it's, another music genius right yeah yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, MT special yeah, I think people waste his his features. I've 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 heard a few of his features mm -hmm. um with a few musicians um recently this month and last month as well. They waste his features when they ask him to come and rap. Okay. If you if you if you invite him, I would say I'm not in the industry. I'm talking as a fan. Yeah, yeah. If you invite him, just ask him to 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 to, to sing a hook or based on the beat mm -hmm. or maybe give advice on what kind of melodies would work on the beat mm -hmm. because it's so good. Mm -hmm. It's like and let ask, him do his thing. Yeah, 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 yeah. Don't tell him to rap. Don't Got you. don't ask for a verse to rap. Got you. Yeah. And I agree with you. I agree with you when it comes to him. So yeah, I mean I think going back to it, um the awards they they they're good for that. But also we've got to think bigger than that because they're also good for PR. Yeah. There's also that because that 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 makes people want to go on your profile and click on your song. Summer Just, nominated, uh, summer nominated artist. The fact that you are nominated, I mean, I was nominated for the BET Awards. No one can take that away from me. Yeah, I'm a BET nominee. I'm one of the very few in this country in the past 15 years to ever be a BET nominee. Mm. So no one can take that away from you. It's a recognition. It really is. Yes, it's nice to have the trophy. But like you say, you're going to have the trophy at home and you'll get over it. And then it'll be just like, ah, the trophy's here. But now, yeah. now what? How long does it take you to get over it? I, I think I'm full of shit. Like within 24 hours, I'm like, yeah, it's here. <laughs> this, I, I don't know whether it's a self-esteem <laughs> issue or I'm like, I'm always trying to drive myself forward. Yeah. I'm like, I don't dwell on it. Yeah. Like, like, it's, I think it's, it's I think when I, it's because you, maybe you're just too much of a, you're such a big dream. I can tell that you, yeah. are, you, you want more for yourself. And you get over moments very quickly. I I also get over moments very quickly. Would you do but, a party? To would Absolutely you do a party not, for? Okay. Not doing that. Nah, not to that commemorate nah. the fact that you got five awards. Nah, not doing that. I'm not even taking the award to the stage. You know, like artists will take their award and they'll go perform with them over. Oh the yeah, yeah, yeah. Nah, have I ever done that? I've never done that. Eh? That's yeah, cool. Because I've got a couple of awards at yeah. home, but yeah, no. But for me, they represent a moment in time. Also. Sometimes when you're not really thinking about it, they're going to be a reminder of one, where you come from. It's important to know where you come from because sometimes you forget who you are in the moment. You'll find that maybe you are in a moment in your life where things are down, things are not really going well and you're questioning yourself. You're not so sure whether if you still have that fire to keep doing this, you're just feeling sorry for yourself. And then you see your awards and you think, man, actually I am that nigga. What, what, yeah. what do I even mean? <laughs> Let's go to the damn studio and get the song done. You yeah. know what I mean? Um, so yeah, man, awards are very important. They really are, and 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 they 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 they're good for the industry, also for the talk, for the for the arguments. Yeah, you know? in the yeah, past. But you know what I love the awards for? Mm. For the production. So I love to watch the performances. For sure. Yeah. Sure. So that's what I mainly go to mm. the awards ceremony for. Yeah, I think we've Not been for we've been critical of ourselves. Um, those of us who love standards mm -hmm. and quality standards that you you would look at awards and you're like that's what you're looking for yes. now because of course as kids i'm i'm 33 now i've been watching awards since i was a kid mm -hmm. i don't watch them anymore because i'm looking for what are the, where are the fireworks mm -hmm. if you have seen um rihanna's super bowl performance <laughs> you know what i'm saying like th that's what you're looking for now <sighs> you know so you don't you don't want to sit through people announcing awards anymore nah the announcements are boring now i want to see there's a there's a there's a there's a clip that that went that that were, was posted last week of of, of Keenan, um when he did his first summer award performances yeah. and he was was singing I want it all and yeah, it was yeah. coming it was coming they were they were they were moving him pushing him through a, a king king's chair like a big king's chair he was wearing yes, king's yes, 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 and he's got girls around him and he's and he's just out there looking like a boss, bro. 
it's those moments. And you know, that's one of the moments that I always remember. When I think about the summers, that's one of the moments I always think about. Because I remember watching that and I'm like, yo, but this kid is, this kid is it. Because the way he comes out, he comes out like, yo, you guys are about to experience me now. Mm. I'm, I'm the guy. This is my moment. And you're not going to take it away from me. But it's, it's the... It's the elements that make it special in the performances, whatever, the light, whether it's lighting or a specific camera angle or someone coming from what, what, whatever it is. You can come from the sky, from sure. water. All those different things for me are what makes awards. And that's why I'm constantly disappointed about the level and the standard of award ceremonies in this country. Absolutely. Yeah. It's, it's easy to critique them because they, they, they're not living up to this. And the other thing is that we live in a digital world so we see what other countries are doing yeah we see the mtv in europe are doing yeah. we see what the grammys are doing so we're like no we can get there yep we can no, get no, to no, the we've start. got all the resources yeah bro the, the fill up the dome happened in south africa did you see fill up the dome though did you see what i remember the buzz around it. i, I didn't get to did see, see the, the actual show no i remember the buzz about it when it happened fill up the dome bro the first one the second one highest level production mm -hmm. Kanye West could have been on that stage. Jay Z could have been on that stage. Mm. It was just, it, it just, it just happened to be Casper Kanye West. Yeah, it, you literally, it's about creativity. It's not even about necessarily all about the budget. Because I know everyone is like, no, but like those people have like crazy budget. No, no, no. Creativity, like really sitting down and say, yo, how amazing could it be if we had s someone coming from this side on top of a camel? Freaking, I don't know what. Like, uh -huh. I'm just like thinking just like anything you. that is visually appealing sure. and that will have a shock factor and a, yo, damn, that's so dope. You've got to think about that when you're creating a show, mm -hmm. a, a, an award ceremony. You know, it can't, it can't be flat stage. Uh -huh. Like, bro, like, like, and we've got the money. We actually do have the I money. Mean, the, the, awards, the, the, the award show will have... Uh, best male brought to you by this yes and and best female yeah, they, you, they're, yeah, they're sponsors they're yeah. sponsors yeah. there so you could use that money you can use the money um, to create some really dope stuff Keenan and and casper that's i think for hip-hop i i i've always loved hip-hop for um the expression um yeah. but what what it lacked for for me but of course i'm 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 actually looking back at it uh, and I always do that. There's hip hop that that that's released in South Africa from 2004 mm -hmm. until 2010. 2010 years. That's my hip hop. Mm -hmm. Those are with my people. Yeah. So Pro the pros Kids, and your Double HP. Double mm HP. -hmm. I had those albums. Yeah. Literally, mm -hmm. I bought those albums and I followed those guys mm -hmm. and my local guys in mm -hmm. Cape Town. Remember 985. Yeah, 985. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah watched Utla, yeah. Utla, Utla, Utla. I Utla, listened Utla. to their album last year on Spotify yeah. and they're so fucking rude. Those, I like them. <laughs> now that I think, but think about it older, as I'm older, but there was a, there was a limitation to their sound. Uh, hip hop on a production level was always limited. It was always looping a sample. Yeah. Um, and there was no, there was a lack of melodies and musicality. Gotcha. And then at some point in 2011, 2012, there's Kespa and there's AKA. Mm. And I think those two... And then, uh, oh, don't forget sure. also, coming from the previous uh, thing, your two, the two, oh, six, seven, eight, sure. uh, um, tier guest. Tier guest. Don't forget. Tier guest. Going another, into KO. An another Chance, uh, their album, sorry, their song, yeah, Another song Chance, another chance yeah. uh, takes the quieter audience and says to them, this is hip hop. Mm. We're going to rap this on a hip hop song. Yes. But we're gonna do it in Zulu so that you get it. 100%. You get the story. It still feels a bit, a little bit like it's quiet. Though. It was an yeah. iconic song. Yeah. After Umoya, that's another iconic song 100%. that transcends our genre. Because I remember um, giving it to my cousins and I'm making them listen to it, and for the first time they could now understand why the fuck I love hip hop because they there it, it's it's in Zulu and they're closer. They understand it mm -hmm. and they understand the storyline, and that was very beautiful. Mm -hmm. And, and, and those guys, it's, it's important that you mention TKS because they actually drive us towards musicality yes. in hip-hop. Yes, and because, melody. And melody. Mm -hmm. They're now starting to do melody. Mm -hmm. And then Casper and AKA, they took it to another nah, level. I, I didn't care about them. I'm no. like, I, I mean, I'm th these are my guys. But no. those guys, you'll never be able to take away what they did. Both of them. But you know also what it is. With the two of them, it was also more than just about the music. Mm. They also took the lifestyle to the top. The the wanting to be rich and successful and the you know what I mean? Like they wanted 
they wanted to be the best of the best and look like those international counterparts. Yeah. They yeah. wanted that type we of We started to believe too. it because yes. we, we would because hear it on time. songs. Yeah, for the longest time. Yeah. Everyone wants to is a rapper with their they say it on mm, songs. And they've got money, but yeah, actually had They that. don't. <laughs> but with those two, they became our first hip hop superstars. Yeah. If I'm taking out um yeah. the level that Pro Kid and Double HP reached 100%. and Tia Guess, they also reached a level of, of, of real success because they have mass appeal. Yes. They had songs that were also loved by people that then necessarily didn't listen to hip hop. Yeah. You know, yeah. even Tux. Yeah, Tux and Anna. I had Mafuku Ami. That was my first album that I ever bought, actually. Mm. Uh, Tux and Anna's That's album. So crazy. That was that was my first album, even though I don't understand. Wait, you so I'm cautious. Yeah, I was about to say. I yo, wrote how were you able lyrics. to to go through that one? I wrote it. That's amazing. There's no food, no job. I I used to love and and I used yo, to write them. Yo, but you, it was something. I I love the album. I didn't understand oh! most of what was being said. He worked wow. with Tasman or Tasso. Yeah, uh, on 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 production. Yeah, and I love that album. Yeah. So yes, I agree with you. Like there were there were people that were big before these guys. Yes. But these but now two when guys. These two guys came. Ha ha, my brother. Huh. They really took it to the top. They really shifted the culture because even even corporate South Africa started looking. Uh -huh. like, Yo, actually, we could we could actually you know partner with these mm -hmm. guys and 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 do something because now these guys are creating the type of buzz that is impacting the youth because it's mm -hmm. always about the youth, bro. Yeah. If you can get the youth to move, then you're winning. You know what I mean? Because the youth is the future. That's literally what tells you where we're going, and that's why I'm a piano. It's so powerful right sure. now because it took over that. It took over that that the youth, the culture of the youth. Uh, but with AKA and, and and Casper, man, for me, that was you know we. It was so beautiful to be an artist and and still work during that time. But it was also so dope to be a, an audience, just to watch mm. all the drama, all the you know what I mean. Them mm. wanting to beat each other up. And yeah, other. yeah. I mean, all of that, all of that actually. It contributed it adds to the appeal to the, to the of appeal. the thing. Yes. Because we're not no, we're not only limited to the songs, mm -hmm. we also want to be so there's something that I'm I've been I've been discovering over the past ten years about yeah. people. Yeah. You are either Messi or Ronaldo. And people oh, yes. are so fucking obsessed about yes. it. Yes. I'm no longer fighting it as a yeah. producer of I'm content. I'm definitely messy. You, you see, let's not go there. And I, I, I want to watch people play football. Yeah. And I don't care about yeah. it. Yeah. But I realize that there's something in people there's that makes them. It. You are either Prince or Michael Jackson. Yeah. There's yeah. something people. Okay, let me take it even further. Yeah. It's idols. Why do you think idols are so big? Because people can root for people. Oh yeah, yeah. Journey. You can choose your person. Yes. Mara de finale is a sure. bit bigger because now it's this person against this one. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All about that. It's specifically. One is going to lose and the other one is going to win. The versus is that mystique of, yo, I wonder who's winning today. Yes, sir. I know it's going to be my person is going to win. No, it's your person. No, your person sings off key. No, my. That's why, that's why that thing is so powerful, bro. And that's why for the longest time, we all thought the beef between AKA and Casper is going to die out. No, that thing lasted a long time because yeah. they also, they understood. Also, they understood. I know some of it was real. Because I was also very close to the situation, so I just some of it was really, really, yeah. real, you know, where they, you know, they, they you were with the Tswanaka. They, they wrapped it. You, you were with the Tswanaka. With the Tswana? Tswanaka. The Tswanaka with Casper. Yeah. What do you mean I was with him? No, I'm just messing with you. I'm just saying. No, absolutely. automatically you chose no, the Tswanaka. No, I've never chosen anyone. Okay. I could never choose any of the two. Actually. Yeah, I see I was, the way that you're speaking about AKA. It's yeah. so beautiful. No, 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 because it's real, man. But also with with Cass, I also had a relationship with Cass. Actually, I was very close to Cass. At some point, before he really blew up to become more... I mean, around the time of Gushesha and stuff, you know, Kess was one of the people that I speak to a lot and he showed me so much respect and I showed him that respect back and I, and I always tried to make sure I remind him that he, there was something special about him and that, 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 that drive. You know, that guy's always had that drive. People don't know. They think they just see him now with the drive that he has. Mm. He's always had that drive, even before. You don't get there without it. No, Even no, no, with don't. your story, Absolutely I see not. it. It's pretty clear. Yeah. You will never be anyone without drive. Without that drive, yeah. So so watching the both of them and just always kind of being in the middle of it, I like the fact that I never tried to get involved uh, because they both meant something to me. I mean, funny enough, man, the way the, way the world works is so crazy, right? Recently, actually just last year towards the end of the year, we played a celebrity game, football game. Oh, yes, I'm a piano versus hip-hop. Yes, um, I was part of hip hop because I'm hip hop. I'm, I'm, I've always been connected to hip hop. I think a lot of people are not aware. I of watched that. you play the yeah. game. Did you watch the game? I watched the game. Yeah. So I played with Kaz and, and Keenan 
And when Kaz scored his goal, literally, yes. the one guy was this side of yes. me, the other one on this side of me, and they high five. Yeah, they, I'm literally yes. in the middle. There's even a video yes, and a picture high-fived. of that. It's true, yeah. It's so crazy to me. Because I've always like wished to see a moment like that when the, the two guys come together and I'm there to witness it. It's actually more symbolic now that you mention it. Yeah. Because we didn't see it coming. No. With the death of AKA no. and them. Because that, that those games were last year. Yeah. Uh, I'm up here. Yeah, just a, just a few weeks ago. Yeah, and actually. at Bitver Stadium, right? The vest, vest no, no, no. Stadium. When are you talking about the first one? I, I watched oh, both of them. Oh, you watched both, I, I watched yeah, the both second of them. one. Yeah, I'm talking about the second one that happened at at Bitvest. Yeah, because I remember um, Junior Kanye was there. Because yeah. Junior Kanye is my yeah, man. I played, so. with, I played with Junior. Actually. Yeah, yeah, he was yeah. there, so I was watching it on YouTube yeah, as well. Yeah. And I remember them high fiving each other. Bro, that that was a moment for me. I know a lot of people maybe might not might not might not have thought of it as anything deep. Yeah. But for me, that was deep. Yeah. Because I experienced it. Meaning, listen, I was facing that. You can even see in the video. I'm facing that way, and all I'm hearing is. Sure, boy, well done. Like, literally, yeah. it was... And it's a real moment. Yes. One of them said, well done to the other, and the other one, sure, pa. And I was like, yo, this is happening, and I'm right in the... <laughs> yeah. It's so crazy. How was it in, in the, the dressing room, after or before? How were they in the dressing room, like, shaking hands like everyone else? Yeah, was yeah no, everyone. There yeah. was no tension. Yeah, no, no, none. None whatsoever. It was yeah. just teammates. You know, like, literally, it was as if nothing's happening. Yeah. It was just like, okay, now we're playing football. We are in the same team, and now we teammates. They were even passing each other the ball. Bro. Yeah, yeah. AK was playing right back, and yes. it's very tall for yes. a right back. Yeah, I remember thinking yeah. about that. Like yeah. you are so tall. They they needed each other, right? Like they did. in order for them to get to this level, to their level, they, yeah. they needed each other. Yeah. I think without without each other, you know, both of them were never going to reach that level that they they reached. These guys reached the level where they could literally live comfortably financially for many many years to come mm. for music. Just for music, you know how difficult that is, bro, yeah. to make that type of a living for music, where you can safely say to people, "Yeah, I've made millions." Like it's not a thing. Mm. I don't have thing. to work. Ever. No, I don't. No, well, I, I don't know about ever. I don't know if we make that type of money. It's not ever, but it's it's yo. I've got millions. I've made millions. You understand mm. how difficult it is to make one million, bro? Yeah. Especially in entertainment with with passion, it's the most difficult thing. But these guys did it, and they did it for years. Like literally. It wasn't just a one-year thing or a two-year thing. These guys did it for almost a, maybe I'm looking at about seven years, eight mm. years. That's very consistent. Yeah. After 2012, give, it yeah. became about them. Yeah. After 2012, hip hop became about yeah. them. And everyone until else was now, just there. Yeah. Until, until now, now, like they were releasing, uh, AKA mm -hmm. released a song, like literally before he died, they released a song and I enjoyed it. And they've just released posthumously now another song yeah. on Spotify. Mm -hmm. It literally, it was still about them. Yeah. And they're still being invited to perform. 100%. Even when Zulu, um, Big Zulu Big was Zulu. doing a diss, mm -hmm. it was around AKA releasing, it was also around the same period when AKA released Lemons to Lemonades. Mm -hmm. uh, you know what I'm saying? They were still relevant musicians, 100%. were still top of their. Game. Still top of the game. Yeah, and, and Cass is still at that level. Yeah. And I thought about him as well, um, as 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 AKA with the memorials and the and the, and the funeral, and I was like, damn man, what do you say on social media when your nemesis dies? Yeah. And without without coming across as though you are being disingenuous. Yeah. You know, how how do you express yourself? Because, I don't want to be in that position. Yeah. That guy is in. Um I'm just so happy though that they they were sports and they they really set they they, they saw this thing all the way through to the end. Um, but I have so much respect for both of them. You know, I've, 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 more than anything to Cass because everyone would expect Cass to be, you know, funny and whatever. But, you know, he's a human being, bro, with a good heart. He's a good guy, you know, and he's going through a lot and he's gone through a lot in the past two years. He's lost so many people around him. Mm. And now you're losing the one person you probably actually adored. People don't know. With that type of beef, there's actually a lot of ad admiration that mm. comes with that. That's when the one been, person you've thought the most about yes, ever. Yes. Other than your own child yeah. and your wife, that's the one other person you've, you've thought about the most. Yep, because you actually admire them. Yeah. At some level, you do admire yeah. Even when nemesis. you're thinking about hating them, you're thinking yes. about them. 100%. When you're thinking about admiring the, their recent work, mm -hmm. you think about them. 100%. Yeah. And that's why the, those funny moments where Kinan would be <laughs> would be playing a Casper song, you know, at a like oh, DJing yes, a song, yes, yeah, yes, and he'd yes. be singing to every lyric. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. yeah. He actually rapped Cass. his own yeah, lyrics. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I yeah. think even with Ngutu, he would yeah, rap word for word. Ah, oh, damn, yeah, that's true. Yeah, because it's like people don't understand, man. Especially with hip hop, hip hop is hip hop, man. It's competitive. Yeah, Kinan was hip hop, even with 
just the whole the whole aura was hip hop, you know. And it, for people that don't understand hip hop, and I'm, you and I can totally get this, but for people that don't understand hip hop, that so called rudeness, the fact that he was rude, he was da da da, da he was a menace, he was a natwenya, like natwenya. It's, mm-hmm. it's hip hop, dog. It's beautiful. And Casper does say, yeah, keep, keep it doggy up, dog. dog. <laughs> yeah, dog. It's hip hop. It's yeah. fun. It's beautiful. As it's- long as it doesn't. I think for me, as obviously it, it gets uncomfortable or un- unfortunate when it then it, it spills over to real life and yeah, people get and violence. Hurt. Yeah, yeah, no, then, then it's not, then it's not cool. Yeah, yeah. no, it's it's we we lived through it. We were here, and yeah. we will be sixty years old, and we'll tell our and kids we'll be talking that about that. In as much as the Americans talk about Biggie and Park, mm-hmm. we'll talk about this. Hundred percent. We'll talk about those two men. Huge moment. And the way that they were competing against each other. Huge moment. We're not appreciating it now because we are in it, mm-hmm. but in, in 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 fifty years time, we'll talk about. We're gonna talk about. It, and we'll it say is. those two men. They elevated the game they to elevated a different level. To a whole new level. Yeah. And there's also theories about the fact that they made it about them, blah, blah, blah. But I choose to see the positive side that Got you. they elevated it. I'm with you. I'm with you on that one. Yeah. yeah. Your album, yeah. Tiki. Yeah. Um, almost every song is featuring Dr. Moruti. Yeah. He's on production. And DC. And yeah, there's there's always like three people. Mm, yeah. Why did you choose to specifically acknowledge them yeah. um on the songs even though of course the convention is that if you're the vocalist that's your song then it's just my the song. producer is the producer yeah yeah i know things things have one things have changed how things work now producers are also artists um specifically djs producers are now a lot of them are djs you won't actually won't find a guy who's just a producer and they don't dj mm. so with that being said it's very important to respect their brands in that way they come onto a song not just to produce a song but they're actually featuring in it you know what i mean and i'm loving the way it is right now to mm. be quite honest with you because i think a lot of producers for most for, for for a long time never really got their credit and their shine they would maybe get their credit from a money point of view whatever yeah. or kosamro whatever but but not with with that 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 pr the mention of their names is important and it's 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 so dope for me to be able to give this moment to these guys because these are the guys that have stuck with me even at a time where I feel like the industry isn't interested. You know what I mean? The past two years, I felt like the certain artists who are, you know, dragging their feet when I ask for, a, you know, a day in the studio with sure. them. It's like, guys are busy. Guys, you know what I mean? It's like... Cause Even if there's there's an offer for, for, for financial compensation? No, 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 no. But that's not how we work. Collaborations in this country don't work oh, okay. because of financial compensation. It's so not about, like I, you br- I bring you here yes. so that I can pay you 50000 or whatever. Yes. Okay. You understand? Um, a lot of the times people do collaborations with artists they want to work with. So there's never necessarily money exchanged. It could be buttering. I give you one song on my on my 100%. album. I give you, you give me That's actually what happens the most. Yeah. It's about value exchange. Sure. Right? So I felt like in the past two years, the artists who I... Because I've always chosen my collaborations very meticulously. It's guys that I'm mainly there f- a fan of, especially in that moment, right? Yeah. Um, a lot of the guys I've tried to work with have either maybe not showed up to the studio or canceled or delayed. And then, you know, obviously... That still happens to you yeah, despite does, your career. Despite of who you are. And, Tina, we're thinking, here we are, I Sakala, we're still starting. It's because, nope. it's because we're still starting. Nope. It happens to even me. And mind you, some of these people call me a legend, bro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Even at my young age. But still, it doesn't. It's not about that. It's about yo, yeah. But ish, is he really popping right now? Oh yeah. Maybe not. So I know. Let's rather concentrate on something else. You know what I mean? But for me, I don't take any of that personally at all. I actually do my best not to ever take anything personal because I understand that it's not personal. It actually really isn't personal. It's just about what people feel will work for them. It's just that some people are not forthcoming with telling the truth about how they feel, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but Dr. Maruti has always been one person that his door has always been open for me. Um, two, he's possibly, I would say, the most musically versatile producer I've ever experienced in the studio. One of the most talented people I know is Dr. Maruti. And he doesn't even get the shine that he actually deserves. Mm. He's made so many hits, that guy. I can I can name them for you. Yeah, please. You might even be surprised. Please. <laughs> Dr. Maruti produced pretty much all the hits that you know um, of Black Motion. Oh. Yeah. 90% of them. 
So he came up with them. He worked with them. He made that music. Uh, Dr. Maruti produced My Baby. He produced Collide by Lady Zama. Of course. Those are my favorite songs. That's Dr. Maruti. From Lady Zama, those are my favorite That's songs. That's Dr. Maruti. That's all his work. From Lady Doc- Zama, yep. Collide and My Baby is yep. my, my favorite song. Yep. Wow. Yep. Dr. Maruti produced DJ Zintle. What's that DJ Zintle song with uh, Tamara Day? That, what's that song again? Yeah, that song. Yeah. No, no, no. Ra- Rainbow is, is Black Motion. He produced Oh, Rainbow, Rainbow is... Yes. Oh, that was big in where yeah. I'm from. In produced Rainbow. Town. He produced... Uh, Dr. Maruti produced... No, no. Um, that's a solid, solid yeah. person. Re- Dr. Maruti produced Rejoice by Black Motion and Busi. You know, oh. remember Rejoice? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dr. Maruti produced um, Imali by, by, by Black Motion and uh, Nawazi. Fagi Mali. Yep. Oh, wow. Mali, Mali, Mali. That's, a, that's a solid, solid, no, he solid is, producer. He is the best... Of the past, the past 10 years, yeah. Dr. Maruti is in the top five for me. I wow. don't care what anybody says. Yeah, you know, sometimes yeah. it, it's it's about how you market yourself, though. Yeah. Like, geez, it's about like, that marketing and that credit. Yeah. Yeah. So fighting for that credit. Damn. You know, so he's, he, oh, he produced um, um, Raindrops by me and uh, Tiwa Savage. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, my, yeah. my biggest continental collaboration, Raindrops. Where I'm in the in the I'm in the rain on raindrops too, like <laughs> on the music video. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's that's yeah. excellent. Yeah, so he he's definitely someone you know to. Really but he kept the sound on. consistent though, because I was listening to Tiki uh, yeah. last night and yes. this morning as yeah. well. That was the, the sound is still yeah. consistent yeah. with your with your sound with as me. Well. With so it's like, just that there's a new. I would say there's a new deep house sound kind of making the sure. rounds. That's where we're going. With yeah, yeah, but yeah. So that that would mean that. You talk to your people about what you want. They know yes. what you want. Yes. They will they never exactly deviate from... Okay. They will, no. You, they you, you they specifically can suggest, choose them. Yeah. You specifically choose them to help you with the sound with that you're developing. With the sound that I want. Sure. Yeah. So I, I, I've always tried to to keep that as the basis of, of my career. You can suggest. If you're part of my team, you can suggest whatever you think you see because I'm, I'm not always going to be able to see everything. Uh, but ultimately, my vision is the one that we are going for. Yeah. It's my vision because yeah. it's my career, man. When things are bad, ultimately, it's all me. It's yeah, me. When sure. things are not going well, it's me. I have to stand for that. Yeah. Is it so, it's five, six songs? It's six songs. No, yeah. no, it's five. It's five songs. I think it's, yeah, that was like one of the things that's. Well, it's that's an EP, out. by the way. Oh, yeah. It can't be an, an album. album. It's only, yeah, it's if it's EP. only a few. Yeah. Yeah. Let me just see. Yeah. I was, I was, I was like, wow. Okay. Is it over? Yeah. Only five, I looked at five songs. So because that, that, this that was on the seventh of February of Feb, on my birthday. On your birthday, okay? Because yeah. I told you told me your birthday is Feb, yeah, okay? Yeah, it was on my birthday. Um, it's named after my well, our dad, sure, our father. His yeah. name was Diki. Um, and you know, I, I named it after him because during the making of this 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 project, I was thinking a lot about him. You know, I was missing my dad a lot. He's someone that. He's always been, it's always been very tricky for me when I think about my dad because I don't have any recollection of our time together because he's late. And when he died, I was nine years old. Oh. But the last time I saw him, I was five. Yeah. The last time I was with him, I was five years old. Yeah. Um, and we didn't see each other for yeah, four years. Yeah, you will scramble for memories yes. if, it, if, if, if it was that long there was, There's no memory whatsoever. But... I have lived through my life with my family members pretty much kind of telling me exactly who he was over the years, you know, and the narrative has always been, he was a great man, like a man of men, like he was a, he was, he was a, sure. Yeah, he was, he was. You think you you took the charm from him? I definitely believe that I definitely did take the charm from him. He was handsome. So he would walk into a room and the ladies would melt. That's what I listen. I'm only repeating what I'm being what told. <laughs> Even my mom says the same thing. Yeah, you know my aunts all say the same thing. You know, um, he was very strict. He never drank. He never smoked. So I took all of Shout that out from to him, him too. Uh, he was he was very he was a, a, a very disciplined. He was a businessman, very successful already at the at the at that age because he died pretty young. Um, he owned taxis, and he also had a panel beating company. So he was a man really on his way to making wealth for, for his family. Mm. Um, and just to know that I had a father like that, bro, yeah. it's like, yo. That's dope. Like, I really need to take it to the top. 
You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah. I need to, cause, cause I'm, you know, I'm following a tough act, you know, and growing up as someone that never really connected to the whole, um, to the whole ancestors thing, never really understood it growing up. I didn't, that's not how I was raised. Like my mom didn't raise me very with those things. Yeah. You know, we need to do these traditional, traditional. things, you know? so crazy is that you grow up and then you just start feeling things, bro. You're just like, yo, but actually the connection is there, you know? And I think me being the spiritual person that I am, you know, with music and, uh, and, 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 and believing in God is so crazy, man. I, I, I'm at a point in my life now where I feel the connection with my dad more than ever before. Mm -hmm. And that's why I wanted to take this moment and, and dedicate it to him. There was no t temptation to do like piano, like or, or sort of like acoustic, acoustic unplugged. Cause, yeah, unplugged type no, of no, thing. That's or, okay, but that's gonna come live though. So okay. I'm I'm gonna record a live performance of that. Not 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 recorded in the studio. Sure, I'm gonna do it with the band with my with my gents with with the, okay. with the team and record that visual also. And then I'm gonna put those those um, 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 versions of the songs out. That's also part of the the marketing and the PR around the around the thing the um, the, the project. Okay, cool. It's a this very, is very personal project. That's the, I, well, you pay a tribute to someone, and the stereotypical way to do it is to do it in a sad, somber tone type of thing. But it's still consistent um, with your type of sound. I never said. Um, you know, and I mean the only sad and somber song here is is I miss you. Yeah. The other songs are very uplifting. You know, but the, but I don't know if you heard the lyrics. A lot of the lyrics are very. The other song that stood out for me was "Cheat." I'm like, yeah, this yeah. is very vivid. Like, no, it's because I was I was I was going through that moment. It's of, very vivid. Some, yeah. It's like someone cheated on. Yeah, me. I have been cheated on. Yeah, like yeah. this song really it was humiliating. I was like, oh shit! Yeah, it's very humiliating, bro. Like che cheating, cheating is not the one, man. It's a, <laughs> it's a, it's another concept for me, man. That it's just weird. Like, so for me, I always find it easier to just like, bro, if you know you want to play. If you know you're still very much interested in other things out there, yeah. just don't commit. State it up front. Yeah, or state it up front so then would, it's not cheating. I would really like to sleep with you. No, but I'm saying if, if, for example, if you're in a relationship with someone yeah, and then you still want to snack on the side, there's no need to lie about it. You can maybe introduce it into the relationship to say, baby, are we going to have other people come and join us? I, or can can I do my thing? Can we like let it be a communication sure. or conversation? Because yeah. some people do say yes. I mean, I mean, I, with the stating upfront thing is is something I would have done too. Like I, I state my intentions from the jump. Like okay, yeah, if yeah. whether or not I'm trying, I'm just trying to sleep with you. Yeah, if it's just going to be yeah. sex. Yes. You know what I'm saying? I, I, I've, I've done that. Yeah. You know, I would rather just do that. Yeah. I, than to lie. Yo, I don't like yeah, lying. Because lying... You get caught into a lie and then you look stupid. Yeah. You know what I mean? So for me, I think that's that's how I look at it. I'm like, yo, if you know you don't want to commit yet and you don't want to have a family yet, just don't commit then. Yeah. Because because people enter into these relationships, into these committed relationships, knowing very well that they're not ready. Mm -hmm. You know, and then they go hurt each other. Like, and that this is what I wanted to talk about on 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 this song. I haven't experienced it in a long time. I haven't been in a relationship in six years, but I still remember the pain, bro. Yeah. It happened back then, but I remember it vividly. I know what that feels like, man. It's not cool. So this is this is really just to to remind people of that element in the relationship. And I know it's also one of those things that people don't like talking about. I was taking a shower and I was like, shit, this is very vivid. Like it's like something that you have experienced yeah. before. Like why um, did you cheat? Like it hurts. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, my videographer is telling me that uh, the cameras are struggling. Oh, okay. uh, yeah. So usually I just talk to people for one hour, but there was there was so this was so dope yeah, that you. um I enjoyed it. Like it's been two hours, twenty four minutes. Jeez, I didn't. It doesn't, it doesn't, feel, like doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like that. It doesn't feel like that. There has been one hour. I have a feeling that we will talk again at yeah. some point this yeah. year or next yeah. year, whenever you yeah, want to come. Yeah, yeah, no, cool, man. It's yeah, I really appreciated you coming. Through. Thank you so much for having me, bro. Thank you for for really, I would say. Just also just being so invested, you know, in what I've done in, in, in my career and what I've what I've um what I've contributed. Because sometimes I do feel like, you know, I don't get enough appreciation sure. for what I've done, you know. So to know that there is someone out there in my industry who does respect and appreciate what I've done. It's so beautiful to see, man. You know, yeah. because I'm a fan of people myself. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm a fan of your work. Yeah. You know, thank I, you. I really love what you do, and I hope you don't give up on it because of 
maybe you feel like ah the numbers are not where I yeah, want yeah. them to be, whatever, man. Ah, dog, just look the other way, bro. I try not to think about numbers, eh? Because we live in the numbers era. Sure, even for musicians, yeah. that's, that's a reality. But if you know that it's really, really, for you, like, the passion is so important, please be careful what your relationship with numbers are because you might find yourself in a situation where you go out of your way to do anything for, for sure. the numbers. For sure. You don't want to You don't want to end up in that. That's case. the greatest trap right now in podcasting. Yeah. And I'm sure even with music. I'm yeah. sure there are musicians who don't like I'm a piano. Yeah. But they do it. But they'll do my, my piano just because it will fly very quickly. It will yeah. get into the charts very quickly. Yeah. You get the numbers, bookings and all of that. Yeah. Yeah. See. So, yeah. One of the things that I, I do is um, I don't write questions down. So, we've had a two-hour conversation. I love it. And I don't write questions down. I'm glad, bro. The way that I do my research is yeah. living through listening to music. Got you. So, if I remember that I listened to something of yours 10 years ago, I'll yeah. remember it. I don't drink alcohol. So, yeah. I will remember it. My memory is still fresh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And living through listening to music and as i'm listening like java mm -hmm. his new album i'm listening to it and i'm like ha huh, i already have an interview with them That's like amazing. i i know what i would ask you based on like the songs I've, I've, I've been listening yeah. to so i don't have to have a researcher mm -hmm. who's going to throw me questions mm -hmm. and all of that shit mm -hmm. i would know. definitely switch on to that interview yeah with java now nah, if he, if because i find him very intriguing yeah 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 yeah, 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 yeah. me very too intriguing. me very. too and, and, and i think a lot of people can't Pull off an interview with him. Yeah. He's very closed up yeah. with, with other people. Yeah. I think they But guess what? When he finds comfort in the situation, you you'll see even his voice gets gets raised, it gets sure. high pitched a little bit because he becomes very passionate. Yeah. 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 I think you you would you would get a buy in from him if he can see that you're interested. Yeah. If he can see 100%. that, oh fuck, this yeah. nigga knows twenty of these songs in this album. Yep. And then you're inside because he is another one that is very personal with his music, though, yeah. with his messages, the songs that you. So he's just like me. He doesn't like the fact that people will, you know, how people just get so obsessed with the first songs you released that made you who you are, yeah. and they just don't want to hear. Yeah, they don't want you to, to and they don't want you anything to else. Continue telling more stories. Sure. It's like you are. I deserve and over the moon for the rest of your life. Yeah, that's cool, but. I've got some new stories to tell, my G. Yeah. So let's not just base my whole thing on just that. He's exactly like that. Yeah. Because yeah. the music means so much to him. For sure. It, 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 it comes across in, yeah. the, in the music and the sound. Yeah. Otherwise, also, I was going to say, before sure. you close Sorry. it off, um, uh, something that I picked up, Cheryl, I wanted to ask you is that, did you, did you grow up like chilling with, with a lot of like, like older, your older, older people? around you? Like, did you have older friends, guys who were much older than you? Yeah, by the time I was 10... Nine years old, I was almost arrested in a farm because there were like 20-year-old kids who were stealing grapes. There's a 10-year gap between me and my first few friends that I ever um, established a friend yeah, friendship yeah, with. Yeah, I've, always, like, I've always had like guys who are older than yeah. me admiring me and like, yeah. yo, let's go somewhere. Because you have a very, you have a very like, very matured aura. Thank very, you. Very, not of your age. Yeah. Because you, you are 33. No? Yes, I left yeah. home when I was 17. Mm. I had to take that care of myself. Yeah. I was like, nah, fuck this. Yeah. I need to take care of myself. I need to do what I need to do. Yeah. yeah. That's similar to you coming to Joburg and hustling. Yeah. I literally just lived in my shack when I was 17, doing grade 11, 12. And I, I was taking care of myself every single day going to school. So Jeez. I've by the time I was maybe 22, I bought my first RDP house in my area. Jeez. Bro. I was already starting to work. Yes, so you were forced to grow up way too early. That's bro, it. And be a be a, a responsible man. Yeah, that's, that's where so it cool. comes from. Like that's where the energy comes from. It's yeah. like, yo, I don't see a twenty five year old. Because you kid. feel like my age, bro. And I'm older than you. <laughs> yeah, yeah, like that's so crazy. Yeah, yeah. And I look like it. I don't give a fuck about how I look. <laughs> I don't wanna care. I don't wanna cut my hair. Nah, I'm, gonna like I'm supposed to cut my hair, but I don't wanna you just there, yeah, bro. But hey, man. You you look after yourself, man. You look way younger than I me. I have like. to do my best, bro. But it also for me, it's also part of business. Yeah. Yeah. I still need to be on stage and look like Donald. You know what I mean? Like, there's also that. Like, I'm I'm still trying to maintain that as for as long as I can. As long as I still can, I will maintain it. Looking slimmer, looking still like you know what I mean. I can still fit in my jackets. You know, in I can just still look like the brand because. Like I said to you, bro, the music, for me, I can do a lot of other things in life and get into business, da, 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 but the music will always be the most important part of mm. what I do. Dave Chappelle, um, Talib Kweli, and most deaf, Yasin Bey, mm -hmm. they were talking about this in their um, podcast. Yeah. They were like, the topic was, how do you make the main thing remain the main, the main thing? thing. You, you must have. That's exactly what I do. The main thing the main will, always, thing be the main will thing. always be the main thing. Yeah. I can do anything, bro. I can literally 
be the most richest musician in South Africa, I will continue releasing these damn albums. Yeah. That's never ever stopping. Yeah, and yeah. with your art form, you will still be a 70 year old like Uprahu and yeah. still be releasing music. Oh yeah. yes. There's no limits. No limits, none whatsoever. You know, even though our country does have this bad habit of trying to put a, you know, a, 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 a thingy, um, what's this? Um, what do you call it? A what what date on you? Like they? Oh yeah, just it's like, like a like time the, frame yeah. in which you're supposed to be a star. Beyond like now that, you're done. You're done. And now you must stop because I cut out with Peli. Well, Utana, I, I don't live with Ubrahu. When they did Utana with Utana Summers, why mm. that was in the late nineties? Yeah. I think somewhere between ninety eight, ninety nine, two thousand. He was looked old. like a grandfather. He was already a grandfather. You know, yeah. So there's no limitation. Like none. You music could, you is could music. still get, you can you still release a banger. Yep. When you are that age, that yep. appeals to people. To people. And it can appeal to anybody. It can appeal to your market, your, your core market, which is the much older people. Yeah. But if a song is really so dope and it speak it can speak to the family, it'll even speak to the young to the child. Mm. You know, because I was listening to those songs and I was really young. Yes, we were yeah. all young when we heard Utanai yeah. and Utumamina. Yeah. But Ubrahu was already over 50 already or yeah. around in, in his 60s yeah. or however old he was. So music is music. And, and I think for me, and this is also irrespective of how big it becomes in terms of the numbers. At the end of the day, there are people that are listening. Same thing with the situation here. Yeah. At the end of the day, there's people that watch, they wait for the next yeah. episode bro. Yeah. they're waiting religiously because they know they're going to learn something really powerful from the interview all right yeah there you go we'll talk again bro like Thank this you, was, this was, this was a, such a beautiful conversation i appreciate I, it I, it's like i don't feel like this is the last time i'm speaking yeah no definitely not yeah yeah, yeah. thank, thank you so, you much, so much boom